recording okay recording. greetings everyone and welcome to yet another buster wolf podcast today we are talking about street fighter 6 it's been a couple of weeks now since the game has released and now everyone has got their fight on so we're gonna go ahead and just simply talk about all the impressions of the game and how we feel about it since the game is in our hands i'm your host renegade operative and first i'd like to introduce rat rat Come on, just yeah, drive impact, bitch. Why you? Oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry, no Sorry just KO to Zangief that was asking for it. Hi, how you guys doing? I'm Street Fighter Six is out. I am so excited to talk about it. Next, first, let me stop playing it. <laughs> let me stop playing. <laughs> Next, we have Aurora. Hey, how's it going? Um, Cami Supremacy. No, I've been hooked to this game, so I'm really excited to talk about it. Next, we have Hades. Uh, the, hello, hi, Hades Manticore here. I, I guess still technically our Street Fighter Six champion since the beta tournament, but yeah, here I am. Good for you. <laughs> All right, the WAP, the Luke WAP. Nikki, introduce yourself. <laughs> Whopper, Whopper, Junior Burger Whopper. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> hi everyone, Nikki here, and yeah, apparently I'm whopping for Luke. Um, I'm excited to talk about Street Fighter 6, um, and yeah, I'm here to talk to all of you guys about Street Fighter 6, and we're all having fun with it. And last but not least, we have Connect. Dude, you look huge. Oh, what's up, ladies? What's good? Ah! <laughs> 10 out of 10, Luke. Uh, I can't wait till we discuss all the details of our thoughts about Street Fighter 6. Well, we're gonna go right off the top of the list with the first question so now that we have the release of the six injury it's time to talk about our general comparisons what do you think of street fighter 6 versus street fighter 5 and the first one i want to go with is hades oh no uh the six honestly is, is better than five and pretty much every way at least at like a base i know it's probably not 100 percent correct to compare it to like the end of sf5 versus the start of six but we're starting out way, way better with this one, just in terms of mechanics and everything. I, well, for the most part, after everyone knows, I really do not like Street Fighter V. Uh, I, I really hate it, just how the turtling game was just extra amplified in Street Fighter V. So this was a lot more rewarding. There's a lot more options you can do to get around people. Obviously, um, it is not 100% perfect, but I do like the flow of this game and the combat better than the last iteration. It goes without saying, though, that I definitely launched better as opposed to how the original was, where it's like you know, people were like lack of features, lack of content. In this one, they give you a big ass world tour mode and they also give you battle hub options and they also give you like extreme battle, avatar battle. So it's a lot of content going around as well as a fully fleshed out roster. So I, I think for the better, they are definitely starting out strong and I cannot wait to see this game when it's all built up with DLC and patches. Who wants to go next? Uh, I'll jump in and say that uh, I think that Street Fighter 6, at least in my personal experience by far, is uh, much better than 5. Um, mostly on account of that I actually gave uh, Street Fighter 6 a lot more time and I've owned Street Fighter 5 obviously much longer. I bought it kind of early on, but um, 5 didn't hold me. Uh, I know that the end of 5 was apparently different, but I didn't even give it that chance. But I think that this is a much better product across the board in numerous ways. Right, right. What about you, sir? So, my Street Fighter V love begins and ends with the fact that they added a character I've been waiting for to return to Street Fighter for years in Karin Kanzuki. She is not in Six, and that does not matter. Because as far as gameplay is concerned, I believe Six just knocks Five out of the park. Hmm. It's just everything is a lot more airtight all the systems are incredibly satisfying to mess around with and land in a real fight you don't really feel like you don't really feel the loss in this one you just want to keep on going because one more round i could totally make up for it this time around i didn't get that feeling with five hmm 
Um, I guess I'll say, um, um, it definitely feels different than five. Like it feels like it's a night and day difference. Um, I, when I first got five, I got it on launch day. Um, I got like the collector's edition with the Ryu statue and, um, I brought it over to my friend's house to play because he had a PS4 at the time. And I said, you know what? Keep this game. I really don't like it at all. I, and I think the thing that turned me off the most was how Nash played when they turned him from a charge character to a rush character. And I'm like, what the hell? Um, so I think definitely that um, the launch has also been much better for Street Fighter VI with all the features, especially has create a, war or create a warrior, create a character, that kind of mode. Um, plus all the other modes that it has also, um, I think they learned from their mistakes from what they did in five and, um, really gave us a good quality game right off the bat. Kaneki, what is your opinions on, uh, Street Fighter six versus five? The one and most important thing they did in terms of, you know, way better than Street Fighter five right out of the gate. With Street Fighter Six, uh, is the fact that the game actually has offline content, and the modes actually worked at launch. So if you wanted to jump straight into online when the game came out, hey, it was working day one, no problems. The, the rollback matchmaking was excellent. Uh, and that was one of my main issues with Street Fighter Five when that came out, as opposed to uh, Street Fighter Six at launch. It's just really night and day difference. Even with the 16 characters, well, I don't know. Is the Street Fighter Five came with like uh, like two less characters as opposed to Street yeah. Fighter Six? I think I think the 16 character was like it, it was nailed it for for this entry because Street Fighter Five, even if you was playing just survival or you wanted to train characters, it, it felt like the roster was less compared to Six. Six, you had variety, no matter what you do. There's so much to do. And it's like you don't want to. Uh, drop down the controller. I mean, you can't take a break at all. That's how good Street Fighter Six is, and I hope it continues. All right. If there's if there's one takeaway you can like in our comparison from six to five, this represents the death of V Trigger and the return of creativity. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's debatable. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that, but I think that's debatable slightly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that the new mechanics are pretty strong right now. Um, so we'll see how it goes in the future, though. I have a bit to say on the next question, but you know what? I'm just going to jump right in and let someone else go first. So, what are your thoughts on the new mechanics like drive gauge and drive impacts? Who wants to jump in first? I I'll take this and say that drive impact takes a lot of getting used to in understanding that it is a weapon for every character and every player that is just as lethal in your hands as it is in theirs, especially in the corner. I definitely approve of this. It really feels like a it really feels like a tool that is going to be slowly ironed out if not well, out removed from the playbook when you get to high level play but for now it's just the the general high that you get when someone tries to drive impact you and then boom you hit both heavy buttons everything slows down and the effect of smashing their face with your own drive impact ah oh, it's just unparalleled so I, I definitely like Drive Impact. Drive Rush? Drive Rush also takes some getting used to in implementing it into your general playbook. I've definitely I've definitely tossed it in there on one character I'm using, for sure. It's a big part of their offense. But I like it. I like I like Six's new mechanics. I definitely feel they play into the general rock, paper, scissors fundamentals of fighting games. Uh, I guess I'll go really quickly because I'm being called. So I, I don't know. It's one of those things where I like it 
and I don't like it at the same time because it's it I seen matches where it's very viable but I also have situations where I use it and then automatically I get stuffed because I get grabbed or uh someone uses drive impact like 90 times in a match and I'm just like oh my god when is it gonna end please for the love of god um but that being said it's most vital setup is obviously the corner pressure because once you hit someone in the corner they they're stunned they can't do anything and once the burnout happens and you do it and they're in the corner then that's like a free stun so it's definitely beneficial to combat i i would say is a lot more simplified than v trigger was because everyone had differing v triggers that did differing things and some of them were great some of them were very awful so this is like universal across the board but i like i said sometimes i like it sometimes i don't and i think that's just the nature of the game in my opinion anyone else want to go on drive impacts and, and how people just spam that fucking thing 24 7 on ranked i'll i guess i'll go next with this uh i can forgive all the bullshit that's been going around with this mechanic lately due to the fact that we finally got the best feature that has been missing ever since street fighter 3 and that is we got parries back baby that's so all say, you need so you're gonna say multiple supers too that's also very very nice to actually have yep multiple supers along mm -hmm. with parries and you know so much variety even in the mechanics the parry that I like, um, I'm still kind of trying to get a little used to the uh, the drive gauge, the gauge, the drive gauge, um, and then all the other gauges. Like I keep going into tutorial over and over again because I tend to forget about it. I'm like, oh wait, aren't aren't I supposed to do this then? Aren't I supposed to do that then? Like it's a little confusing, and I just feel like I have to keep um, like reminding myself or going back into tutorial and seeing what it is all over again. <sighs> Anyone else uh, on uh, drive impacts? Yeah, no. Uh, um, I think that definitely there there are some mechanics that you're getting used to, and at different levels of play, you really start to see it. Um, definitely, I think in like I'm only at gold, like four, well, I think I'm at four now. I was five, but uh, definitely like silverish area because I placed in silver. Um, you definitely saw a lot of drive impact, and you just had to get used to reacting to it, and like also not using it as a panic option. I think that um, as like higher level play goes, it seems pretty polarizing. It seems like it's a consensus amongst better players and some friends of mine that are much better than me that it's kind of like drive rush is really what becomes polarizing, especially for certain characters. Not all drive rushes are created equal. Like DJ, that's made, that's like a damn teleport. That's just what it is. Like DJ is there and like he flashes it, you're not reacting to it. Um, and I think it becomes kind of like polarizing um, at certain points. And it's kind of like the, the game mechanics are so powerful that there's not as much diversity. It's kind of like you're playing Drive Rush Fighter 6 sometimes. I think it's great, but it would be nice to see that if it's sort of turned down or toned down a bit so that characters have a, like or players have a bit more diversity because it is kind of like let me drive rush into here get my plus frames and like i'm gonna grab you or i'm gonna like try and frame trap you and it's like turns into some p characters like especially dj um just raw drive rush and neutral he's just kind of like he's there um but other characters you know benefit from it as well i think kins i heard uh was like going full screen someone was like back dashing or jumping back and ken from the other end of the stage did raw drive rush into heavy punch and still caught the person that's kind of like all right that should probably not happen but i do like them i think it's cool it's fun to use it's uh takes some getting used to but it it seems to be kind of like dominant and the game mechanics are too strong right now yeah, I, I've i seen, it seems to be just part of the game now where it's like someone will drive rush and combo someone into death. I saw that earlier with JP and I'm like, how we're seeing high level play with it. So I'm not saying that it's necessarily like the worst thing in the world, but in terms of the spam, as usual, it just kind of is there. So nah, you'll say it because JP is using it. Uh, yes, that is true. I have a little bit of bias <laughs> yeah. for that. That's a later question. <laughs> yes. Anyone else on uh, Drive Rush before we move on? Drive Impact? I, I definitely think Rush is probably the strongest of like the new mechanics in this game since 
Yeah, I've, I say it as a Honda player, because if I hit headbutt, I can immediately always follow up with it, and it creates a whole new level of, like, strike throw. Because now, like, the big problem with SF5 was I ended up a little bit too far away when I would hit command grabs and stuff, but if I hit a command grab now, I can just drive rush straight in into another command grab or another rush, you know? That's about all I gotta say on the topic. Everything else seems, like, okay, to be honest. Yeah, the rush is interesting because it makes it's literally creating new dynamic combos for like other people, whether it's like uh, different commands or people doing like some of the same inputs. They're definitely like experimenting with that. And I I just kind of like that because it's leading to a whole different play style from something like so easy to sort of command off of and do so i don't have a problem with the rush mechanics in particular i think that's like absolutely fire rad did you talk about this uh i already did yes okay i have proof of drive impact and drive rush especially because drive rush is good it's just it's just gonna be a a new offense because mm-hmm. yeah i i know we're done talking about five five at times felt more defensive or maybe i was just playing the wrong game but with six with six it just gen you're just generally rewarded for going in and mixing up your stuff because there's many ways to do it mm. also we have a new contender uh we have a new challenger andre welcome introduce yourself yo yo what's up of street fire six um yeah, sorry if it's a bit unexpected. Um, you got to start already? Uh, yeah, we're on, like, the second question, which is... So, you know the drive impact where the guy just sort of has this paint color behind him and he does this impact hit, and uh-huh. if it hits you, you get stunned? We're talking about uh, how we feel about that in the game. Drive impact? Yeah. See? Or the rush uh, where they do the green combos. Uh, okay, so if you want my honest opinion about drive impact... um. I like the mechanic. I think the way to circumvent, like, running out of it is, um, how I look at it, you gotta, like, use it carefully, you know? Don't, like, use EX moves repeatedly, because that, that's how I kept ending up in burnout, because I kept mashing, like, EX over and over again. And also using, like, the focus attack. Don't, yeah, don't spam it too much. And, yeah, I think if you, like, know what you're doing, like, just not, like, use it, you, like, Basically, manage the meter carefully. You'll be all right. I personally like... I don't mind it too much, personally. I like it for what it is. Yeah, yeah. now that we're talking about the meter, I kind of have to apologize to the myself of a year ago because he was concerned that Street Fighter VI was just going to turn into meter porn, just general management of meter and just management of resources, and it's going to forget how... Street Fighter is supposed to play fundamentals, pokes, attacks. No, Street Fighter Six did not forget that. And yeah, this, yeah, this this drive meter definitely makes that decision making and increases it tenfold. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree, Rad. Rad. Yeah, I I hundred percent agree. I think drive really. I want to say drive is probably the most fun. Like I think when it comes to Street Fighter mechanics, it's probably the most fun in a Street Fighter game I've had to date. Yeah, and you you can't spam like you if you spam it, you're just gonna get burnout. So there is uh compensation there. I, I kind of wish it was not as many drive impacts, so someone missed or blocked it. But uh, if you're grabbed or or hit or whatever, and and you keep doing special moves, and that meter just keeps getting chunked down, you're gonna run into a situation where you can't use meter for like couple more seconds so it makes you think on your feet as opposed to just constantly throwing it out with out warning because that's how burnout happens but uh anyone else on this question before we move on does yeah. anyone use drive reversal uh is that yeah. the- sometimes sometimes uh, not much i, I need I- you though i'm trying to practice with the system more depends yeah. on the character i'm facing is that the one where if you hit someone, it does like a reversal? It turns like watercolor again, and you hit them on impact. Like alpha counter. Basically. Alpha counter. Yeah. I. That's what I, was gonna say. I only hit that like maybe a few times with Ken. It's just the timing, but I have done it before. I I think it's pretty alright if it's situational. Like it definitely got me out of the corner like four or five times. So 
I I don't think that it's a worthless mechanic at all. It just depends on where you know where the hit is coming and how you use it. Yes, yeah, like Kim and Lily, it's pretty much invaluable to be honest with you. You need those characters off you if they're ever in your grill. Kimberly too, because she has a lot of target combos, and it's just like, oh my, just just get off me, please. Mm. I fucking hate fighting Kimberly so much. Oh, oh, Kimberly puts you in the corner her. and it's 50-50 yeah, the cost game. She me my fucking rank. <laughs> Day one. <laughs> like, my EX headbutt will blow her up a lot of the time, but man, I do not like fighting that chick. I yeah. wish I could fight the Kimberleys you've been fighting, because the Kimberleys I fight, it is crystal clear they are new at fighting games. I, I, uh, I got washed by a gold Jamie days ago. <laughs> it was an experience. I finally beat a platinum. I was so damn happy. I can't wait to talk about that. I'm so I, happy. I have been schooled once. I remember it was when I first got into plat, and I played against the plat Ryu, and he absolutely destroyed me. And I was like, man, that sucked. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I I don't know, man. Like even as I've gotten higher and higher in ranks, I still feel like everyone's really really sloppy. Yeah, it's. And I, occasionally I'll fight someone that can just pound me into the dirt, and that's about it. I'm starting to get golds everywhere because my general like rank is starting to become like silver. I'm not sure if it's like even on a document. Is it on a document with the ranking system? Maybe, but uh, I since I'm fighting those silvers, I'm just constantly getting golds and plats now. So yeah, it's like I'm getting slowly used to what is going on with uh, high level play and everything. So it's it's an interesting experience in my opinion. But uh, we're going to move on to interesting questions. Question number three. So personal feelings on modern control scheme being implemented in here. I just want to go really quickly on this. So I see people getting hella salty over this and then saying, oh, you use modern controls, you're a scrub. But in my opinion, I people are utilizing it and mastering it and it is tournament viable. So I don't really see the issue is like, hey, if you never play a Street Fighter and you're learning softly, you know what I mean, in a different way, then that's fine. I've seen people that are experts with modern controls and I've played people that are absolute trash and that has went across the board with modern and classic. So I just see it as another opportunity for people who haven't played Street Fighter to learn the game as opposed to me, where it's like, I played it and I'm like, this is weird. I don't like this. I'm pretty sure I would if I wasn't a classic Street Fighter main, but I enjoy the classic control. So that is what I play mostly. And that's how I feel about it. It's free game and everyone can get these hands with the M or with the C on it. So that's how I feel. Uh, anyone else want to go on this question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll never take it. You take it, bro. For sure. No, um, I'd have no real issue with it. I think initially it used to bug me. I think the only thing that truly bugs me about it is that, like, you're not even really supposed to jump that much in Street Fighter anyway. That's like, you know, you're not like, but you can't jump against somebody that's playing modern. You're getting DP'd every single time. You're getting anti aired every single time, like, without fail. Like, if they see you jump, like, I play Kami, and, like, I'll try and do, like, instant, basically, dive kick, and they're still there. Like, I'm in the air, and I'm already, like, they're already done. Like, but, uh, I think it's fine, and I think it's actually somewhat balanced. You do 20% less damage, and you don't even have access to all your buttons, like, slash moves or whatever. So I think that's a fair trade-off. Um, so it's, a uh, I don't hate it. I don't necessarily think it's a uh, scrubby to use. It's just one of those things that we have to get used to. And this is like more of like a modern era of fighting games. We're not in the arcades anymore. And it's not like uh, you have to do that. I think fighting games are a lot more accessible in that regard. And I'm okay with that. Rat, what do you think of the dreaded M online? So uh, anyone who is playing with modern controls is essentially playing with half a character. If you see the M next to them, you can kind of get their game plan and treat them like like an EX version of a character, if you will. Especially because so uh, my uh, uh, fighting game equivalent to a horror game is modern Zangief. <laughs> That's an S tier yeah. character right there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> bro, Zangief is um the Zang dreaded spinning Sorry. pile driver that takes a third of your health is on one button. Not a direction oh, pressed. No. Not a direction pressed of any kind. It's on one button. Bro. And that's the special button. Zangief in six is ridiculous, man. The amount of damage you can do with this throws. Oof. Same with Manon. <laughs> 
So uh, I, I think it really depends on the character. I think it's just, it's again, it's another one of the things that takes some getting used to in definitely understanding what your what the, the other characters can do and what they can't do when they're in modern. And everyone just getting upset is just looking for an excuse as to why they lost because the difference between modern and classic is just control layout, in my opinion. Yeah, I've I've lost to some guys doing crazy combos with modern controls. I'm just like, you know, this is fucking happening to me. This is, this is happening. So, uh, but I, I never took it as, hey, you're using this. You're just a scrub. You know what I mean? It's like it's just an alternate control scheme to learn. And I I've been beaten with both, so I just take it and try and try to go to the lab and get better at the game. And that's how I've beaten like many players with it and without it. So it's, it doesn't really bug me in the grand scheme of things, but I can see how some people are just like, I, I jump in and I'm just going to get fucked by these people. So I just try to think of different strategies. Um, Modern controls are for posers. <laughs> oh, there she goes. She Hot said, tool. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. Hot for takes posers. in here. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, for me, I'm iron controls. Uh, you know, something I, I'm all for it. I, I honestly want man, more people get into fighting games, like, regardless if you're like a vet or like a newcomer. I think the game is like definitely more accessible and like, you know, everyone can get into it. I think that really like adds a whole lot more community, but also, you know, people get into fighting games, which is always great to see. So, yeah, I'm fine with modern controls. Mm. Anyone else on the modern control scheme before we move on to the next one? I can't even comment much on it, despite that I only fought four to five people uh, with modern controls. And I beat yeah. five of them, so I can't even comment. I'll say yeah, I could say the same. It's not as much as an epidemic as uh, people thought it would be. I've only seen like a handful of modern and ranked, and the only pro that I know is using a modern is Tokido, and he's playing modern Luke. It really, it just depends on how limited your character is with modern controls versus classic. Actually, let me let me ask another question. We all know modern controls is is qualified and ranked. What about dynamic control? Forbidden. So <laughs> Why? For, is, for, is it the, easier than modern? Yeah, yeah, it's literally the button awesome button. Jesus, never mind. Just win by default. It's crazy. I don't even know what dynamic is. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how it functions. Um, I, I don't know what it does either. I've seen it. I, I knew it existed, but I don't know the difference. I think dynamic is probably the one button when all the super combo buttons. So I, I see why that's forbidden, banned, and only regulated to the offline modes. And I think it's probably for the best because we already have people getting tilted by modern. So if they put yeah. that in, then I'm pretty sure it's going to get even worse. So am I going to get like a nuclear bomb drop right on their house? It is literally just you press any of the attack buttons and you get an ai assisted attack as to what is best for the situation type of thing it is crazy nuts that's cr mm. i see i've seen it in the menu i was like what is that and i was like is this another control scheme but when i went online i saw it was only two of them i was like oh, this has to be probably taken away for a reason and i guess now i know why all right, so I think that's enough for modern controls. So we're going to switch over to world tour mode. So has anyone played the world tour campaign? And if so, what do you think about it? Who wants to go first? We can go first since I'm playing it. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Rad. This this mode, it, it starts out this world tour mode. Uh, here it comes. It starts out really <laughs> cool, mm -hmm. like a like a combination of a Final Fight Metro City setting and Dragon Ball Xenoverse. You take your Street Fighter created character, you learn from the others, and it seems good. There is a lot of grind in this mode, and just more than I'm comfortable with when it comes to like single player content in a fighting game, and. It really kind of dragged down the general enjoyment I'm having when you are fighting enemies that can cut you down to size in like three combos. And it takes you like two minutes just to whittle down one life bar. What level did you end up at? You beat it, correct? 
51. That's about I was I was 52 and I felt very under leveled the last two fights in the game, which were the most difficult yep. ones, unfortunately. <laughs> it really did <laughs> have that. Me. It really did have that Pokemon feeling where when you get to the final area and the Elite Four you fights, the, the levels just drastically go up. Hmm. Like like late 40s suddenly turn into the champion being early 60s. That type of thing. Basically, yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> I'm still at level 20. <laughs> Don't worry, you can, if it gets too hard, the later bosses, you just do what I did, and just keep slamming energy drinks until they're out of health and you're not. Yep. Yeah, it's, that works. <laughs> it's a Tails game! How many items can you spam? I, I'm it's... fighting the big bad final boss, he's kicking my ass, and he's like, haha, you're a loser, and then he just sees me chugging 50 Red Bulls, and I'm right back in there. <laughs> like, I need... Yeah, I'm on, like, I'm level 43 on world tour and i'm like chapter eight oh, it's 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 too bad we're in spoiler territory i would so talk about a thing um, i i do enjoy oh aurora you want to go first no no go for it go for it oh i just wanted to say that i i have been playing it um i'm still a baby at level 18 but <laughs> overall i do believe that it, and it feels like this that this mode is going to get more and more grindy as we go on because i've been fighting people i, I see people as like higher levels and i'm like i know i'm not fighting them so i'm just gonna skip right past them and then there's the mandatory fights where it's marisa i was fighting her and her health bar was like pretty long so uh Overall, though, I, I would say it's a nice little addition. It's, it's not a bad mode. It has a lot of things going on in the world to explore, and you get lore tidbits, and you talk to your favorite characters. You get uh, text messages from them, and, and they might be either interested in teaching you and stuff like that. But uh, in general, it, it is just... I wouldn't say it's a whatever mode, but it's just there. It's just something that, hey, if you aren't really feeling the traditional campaign that you can have this so this might work for street fighter going forward because i know mk is probably not gonna do conquest or anything like that so it's just like peeling off an idea that another company could benefit from yeah yeah definitely mm -hmm. one of the positives i will say on world tour is that as you're learning from your masters, as you're learning their special moves and supers, you get to learn a little more about them, especially the especially the characters from past Street Fighter games. What have they been up to since Street Fighter V, especially with Chun-Li? Oh, she retired from Interpol, and now she's teaching people her kung fu like her dad did before her. Mm. Things like that. <laughs> That is the best part. Or you, or you get like a mm -hmm. uh, reused storyline where he doesn't know how to use a phone and you're just teaching him the whole time. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh, yeah. oh, my god. Kimmy, Kimmy just tests your response time and getting back to her in a phone message and her response is cat. <laughs> I, I really, it's a, a funny bit of like seeing them use emojis of themselves to talk to you. I don't know what it is that makes me laugh. Or spoilers. It's, it's or, really or spoilers. The return it's... of Retsu. Oh yeah, yeah. That, was dope. that was I fought them, and that was yeah. that was cool. That was really yeah. cool. Come. That that's well, another. Yet, but that's another good thing about World Tour. A metric ton of. Easter eggs, especially oh. a few characters you can meet in the story and get a quest or two from them. Uh, actually, I love quick, the Easter eggs. Question: yep. I don't mean to interrupt anyone, but uh, question: uh, Did you guys run the Carlos Miyamoto yet? Uh, I was just gonna yep. start talking about the Carlos yep. fight. Yep, I feel like we were all I'm hive minding Carlos. Make him playable. Make him playable fight. season two. Carlos, Thank let's you. go. Please, dude, his design looks sick. I'm like, they gotta make this dude playable. Isn't I that, that, guys got his own moveset. <laughs> Isn't I that a that final... wake up, I need that wake up sword slash in my life. Isn't that dude, a final so fight? You're a freaking moose owl attack on me, and I'm like, what the hell yes. is he doing? What are you sure, Ryan? Is, isn't that a final fight character? Final yeah, he's a too. final fight character. Yes. Yeah, oh. oh, okay. Uh, two, I have not played a lot. I've only had a lot of uh, experience with the first ones, but that's cool that they're bringing in more Final Fight characters. It makes sense, Metro City. So, mm -hmm. that I being said, uh, back to interacting with the characters. In some cases, they have a bond level where 
uh, as you increase that, they'll be more than likely to assist you in a fight and assist you longer. Some of the items you can use to raise that bond are cryptic as hell. And you would never think in a second, hey, Cammy, you want us to get to know each other better? Shuffle down all of this fish for me. Mm. You like fish, right? Oh, you hate it? Here's ten more. DJ's is apparently a lukewarm beer, and I'm just like, I feel like that's an insult to give to anybody, to be honest with you. Yeah, right? <laughs> Honda's is a rubber ducky, which made sense in retrospect, to be honest. I had to think about mm -hmm. it a little bit. But uh, I was like, oh, yeah, he has a bathhouse. That makes total sense, you know? Like, some of them you have to, like, either read the Wikipedia or, like, already know that. Like, like Luke, for example, like, as soon as I got the um, the Resident Evil game, I'm sorry, or no, um, was it Red Elevator? Yeah. I think it was, yeah, as soon as I got Red Elevator 8, I'm like, immediately, I need to give that to Luke. And yeah. he's like, yeah, I'm afraid of it, but I'll play it. But, but you, you know I hate horror games, right? Plus five, plus five, yeah. plus five, mm -hmm. plus five. You know what's funny? Uh, if you talk to Luke, he's actually a big PC dude. Like, he says he, like, you know, customizes his PC RGB. Like, yeah. he, it's pretty cool. Yeah, like, you find out a lot more about him, like, how, like, he used to, um, I think he said he used to scrap cars when he was younger, and, um... Yeah, yeah. I what was the that. other one? Oh, and he's he's a fan of Ninja Gaiden, apparently. Really? <laughs> oh, interesting. How'd they sneak that one in there? I, they didn't specify Ninja Gaiden, but they said, like, ninja stuff, and I'm like, oh, well, maybe he's a fan of Ninja Gaiden. Or Shinobi. Yeah. Or Shinobi. Yeah. Mm hmm Seems about right. Yeah, yeah he's a ninja from, from their other game. Kid, he's too young. Strider? Yes. Strider, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, like... The Boshin Ryu. I heard someone say too young or so. I'm like, yeah, I don't know how old Luke is. Like, he feels like he's... Any of the games that we played in the 80s and stuff like that, 80s, 90s, he's probably too young for, but... I mean, he could play them now. It's not like, you know, these games ever go away. I, I Luke think... is 27 for reference. Yeah. Is? That's what I thought. I thought he was 27. Because I'm like, oh, he's. Wow. I know the timeline's all wibbly wobbly, but that's what mm -hmm. the internet is telling me. So. Exactly. Yeah, that was that was the age I put him at. Because like he has too much past experience for him to be like 21 years old. I'm older than Luke. That's fucked up, man. <laughs> yeah, so am I. I'm the same age as him. That's the funny thing. I am here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're all youngins. <laughs> yeah, fucking zoomers, man. Go play games with Luke. <laughs> now Luke's man. good. Six. He's good. He's this man is afraid good. of horror games. I don't want to play with him. Yeah. <laughs> no, That's man. a good thing though. Yeah. Playing a horror game with someone who's afraid of him is great. No joke. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Luke. Like I just have him like screaming next to me while like eating pizza and playing Resident Evil. What, yeah. what if he's playing like Resident Evil 2 and he opens up the locker and the body falls out and he just sandblasts the TV screen? <laughs> oh, that's like five thousand dollars gone. Sandblaster. Oh fuck. <laughs> Never again. That's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> All right, so we're moving into characters now, and we have top three characters that are your favorites for casual or ranked. Cite your reasonings. Who wants to go first? I'm going last for this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me, I'll take center stage first on this one. Obviously, I, I'm a Honda main, and I have to say that this is the most fun Honda has ever been in any Street Fighter game so far. Just a lot of a lot of crazy damage, a lot of really fun stuff. I think his CA, where he makes a sumo ring by skidding your heels on the ground, is absolutely oh, insane. Yes, that is such a that is such a good CA. Uh, either or if he just throws you out, or if he does the headbutt. Either way, it's pretty great. Number two, I think Manon is really fun. She's, I, I feel like she's like Laura, except actually like a good character to play. Like very long range <laughs> normals, very high damage, and just, just an overall very cool character. Also voiced by Chirami Lei, who's a voice actress I like. And I haven't played him too much, but Geef would probably be my number three, because he just has all this fun new stuff. He's got a jackhammer now. He's got six throws, like it's Street Fighter 2. It's great. Just overall really fun stuff now. Mm, right, you go next. Marisa is my number one character in this game. Just uh, easy combos, big, heavy brawler character where 
each attack of equal strength practically goes into one another. Her quotes are incredibly satisfying. She has one of the most all you just feel like a badass when you hit it moves, where she does the scoot and pose into the throw and she knocks you down with a fist to the ground and it's like a quarter of your health. Where are you going? You just want to say it every time that move hits. There is such power behind that character. Like, Marius is my number one. My, uh, like, unopposed. Secondary, however, is still Luke. It helps that I've been using him since the demo. So I've gotten used to him. He's like, he's like a hybrid between the Shoto Ryu and the Charge Guile, where you do have all these fast moves at your disposal that you can just use willy-nilly and tons of target combos to learn. Just a generally fun character. Like, I appreciate him being the new face of Street Fighter because it, his voice actor is definitely helping a lot in that respect. And then for a third, I would honestly have to say Chun-Li. It helps that my World Tour character borrowed a lot of Chun-Li's moves, so I learned how to play the game naturally through that. Uh, she's just like a general calm and patient character that has plenty of rapid-fire moves to blow through, drive impact, uh, should the need arise. Like, like great wake-up satisfying supers and yeah uh like third strike chun li is back you do your hoyok sen and then you fly off and continue your combo and uh, while we are talking about drive impact marisa takes a giant dump on drive impact just uh her her upper body is so filled with armor if you try to hit her with it she punches you back with this full strength strike and it's like oh i love the characters in this game i want to learn more of them but for now that's just my top three wop what about you um i'm playing with uh, Maris marisa i'm playing with her as well um of course i have to play with the greek character because this is the first time I ever got a Greek character in a fighting game. So I'm like, besides Sophitia, but I'm really, and really happy with it. And she's boss. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, well, Big actually, boss yeah. Mama. <laughs> actually, Nikki, I don't mean to cut you off, but Marisa, I think they said Marisa's is Italian. Yeah, she, yeah she's, she's Italian and Greek. Really, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I think she's she has Greek ancestry, but she is from Italy. Yeah. Um. Especially because I always wanted a pa pa oh my god I'm gonna mispronounce this pa Pacatron, uh fighting style character in in a fighting game also so I'm really happy with that um, and she's just a lot of fun to play with like she's brutal but she's also really sweet too <laughs> um, um, and then Jamie I'm also playing with um, I did not expect to like him like I didn't think I was going to I just thought he was just gonna be like a character like oh he's there you know whatever I'll mess around with him but um. I played arcade mode and um, or versus like one on one just to get some practice in, and he whooped my ass so silly. So I decided to start playing him, and right now he feels like the closest thing to Fei Long that I've had in a while. So to say we don't um, have any racket characters in this game, do we? Mm. And I don't think really, so. I don't. Jamie yeah, has I a Rekka. Well, is, yeah. I was gonna yeah. say, is Jamie a Rekka character? I can't remember. Um, like, kind like, of. Sort of. To a degree. And I yeah, think Ken was... has one as well with his Genrai mm -hmm. variation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, with the exception um... of Ken. Mm -hmm. And then I guess my third character would probably be Luke. Of course. I mean, that's... Oh, of know, course. I'm whopping for him, so apparently I have to play him, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, it helps for dating, right? We're, we're dating in the world tour mode, so. Uh, that was a real sus ass question when Luke was like, he's asking random people what time they take showers. I'm like, what the hell? Like, all I right. mean, we live together. That's why. <laughs> uh, like, all right, this is Luke. You need to calm down, man. Yeah, he starts asking me like when I take my showers. I'm like, oh, what? I'm like, dude, are you asked? Like, there's other ways to ask me if you want to join. I mean, what the? <laughs> All right, this podcast is turned into not safe oh. for work. 
Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, my. Why are Street Fighter players so Very sexy. We were this close <laughs> to getting a dating game in this, we, this world. We, we yeah, it. really, it does feel like a dating sim. <laughs> we really do owe the Dead or Alive community an apology. No, no, we oh, get absolutely. This. Especially this is, Steam Cammy yeah. outfit. This is the, I'm, not, I'm just going to say it, this is the horniest Street Fighter that has ever been. Oh, right. Legit. Flat absolutely. Out. Not even just the, jury either, because I would like to add in that. No, foot fetish. No, no. Manon, practically. Is Cammy Cammy's costume is problematic. Shut the fuck up. Oh no, yeah, we was, got uh, giant oh, feet. She's in... wearing too much, or she's wearing too little in her. Uh, in she's her, um, she's wearing her classic costume, the leotard. And well, now we got people saying Cammy is ugly, so I, I think nobody could be pleased to be honest. Yeah. You're fine. Oh, oh, nah. Dude, Cammy looks beautiful in six. Like she looks amazing in that game. Damn, she looks great. This in is six. the most. Oh, this, this, is the most this is the most uncensored Capcom has done. You want to go back to Street Fighter? They sound like they want to go back to Street Fighter Five, where they censored like literally almost everything with character costumes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm good. They uh, might. Let's... They might want to on Twitter. I don't know. Uh, I'm good. Anyone that thinks Cammy's new design that like does not look good, um, I'm looking at questionably. Uh, I actually think that Cammy's design currently that's half the re like that's half the reason, ninety percent of the reason that I'm playing Cammy in this game is her new design is amazing. Like I, I guess like the classic look was cool and all, but like she looks better, like in my personal opinion, with this one. Um, that's just me. I don't even have them all unlocked, so you can't just. Yeah, can't I think this is the best Cammy's ever looked. You can't go wrong with yoga pants, man. It's like oh, the yeah. 10 out of 10. All right, so before someone nuts, uh, I want to give my <laughs> top three. Uh, so I have been playing as Luke, which, I mean, you know, basic setup character, a, a lot of uh, cool strings to do with them. Uh, the, you know, I, I just like characters that have the DP move, which uh, will crush the fuck out of anyone doing anti-air. And overall, I just think he's super fun to play with. I, I picked him up like relatively easy, and ever since then, I've been. I think he's my highest rank character so far in rank sets. Second one is Ken because I, I like classic Ken. He's it, always awesome. So, uh, just doing all his moves and then and lighting people on fire has always been that staple to me of appreciating that character. Street Fighter it was always cool to do that in the original, and I, I like that it's amplified here. And then the last one that I play with, it's a toss up because I, I play with like multiple people outside of that, but I have to go with Jury currently. Uh, very strong from what I see. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to know how to deal with my Jury online as far as rank goes. So, and, and that guy doing constant wake up DPs and that mirror match and getting grabbed was a. Uh, phenomenal so i'm really starting to enjoy her play and appreciate that and and all her crazy moves not so much the foot stuff but just the the insanity of her fighting style is just unparalleled to me so those are my top three for now if i had any honorable mention i would say jamie uh jamie's looking to be pretty good although he you have to be on point with getting an opening because if Jamie does not get an opening, he is stuck to long animations, which is what I noticed. So you're going to want to make it count. If you don't, you're going to get punished very, very hard. And and that's my top three with honorable mention. Uh, sure. I can, uh, I think I'll go with this one. Sure. Uh, top three. Um, all right. I'll start with number one. He's obviously Marisa. She's, out of all the newcomers in six, she's honestly my favorite. Like, I love her designs a lot, um, especially her like her suit. I really love the two player suit costume she's got. Um, she is fucking of... ripped. Rip. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She just mainly she hits hard, and um, I really like how her fighting style is just straight up aggression. But she also has like some holds, which is kind of nice with her like whatever stances into the throw. Um, also another thing too, I really the voice actors for her. Um, Allegra Clark does great. Like, she just kills it in the role. Like, all Maurice is just like, you know, was all when she does like her attack moves, you know, especially when you like, um, especially like her taunts. Like, she's just great in the role. Yeah. I was like, has some six voice acting. He's great on all fronts for everyone. But yeah. Second one is Ryu, because, you know, always a Ryu guy. Like, Ryu's my dude, always has been. <laughs> Uh, third one is um Lily. Uh, 
I'm trying to like get used to her, but she's she's actually pretty fun to use. I never like used Tiag that much in Street Fighter, but when I found out Tiag was gonna have like sort of like a successor, I was like, all right, I'll pick her up. And I want to say she kind of reminds me of Tom with the win stuff. You know, she can like stock up win and bust up her super um special moves and attacks. Yeah, but those are my top three so far. Hmm. Anyone else on top three characters you like? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll run through this pretty quick. Um, I mean, honestly, Cammy, Cammy, and Cammy. But um, <laughs> I've really, for the most part, I've really only played Cammy um, since the game's released. In the open beta, I did play Jury. Um, but no, I think Cammy, just by her design, I like how she plays. And I've always kind of liked her as a character. Uh, so she's definitely my number one. Number two would be Jury, since I actually have gotten to use her uh in the open beta she's a lot of fun like her design the feet people ruined it for me um i'm not a part of the foot clan but yeah she's a cool character <laughs> um being into psychopath women <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's hard out here um if i had to pick a third that i'm interested in like or that i would be interested in playing it would probably be a toss-up between chun li and manon um i think they seem like fun characters to play and the honorable mention, I guess, would be Marisa, and she seems to be pretty popular here in this podcast. But I just think she's she just seems amusing and very disrespectful. She just does like a metric fuck ton of damage, which you know frustrates me when I'm playing ranked. But it is what it is. And uh, that's that. Anyone else before we move on to the next one? Anyone else went before I go? I think that's I it. I think we've all been cleared all, at this point. All play. yours. All right. All right. Well. Initially, my first guy would, would be Ken Masters because from when we all played the beta, it was between Guile and Ken Masters. Oh man, they were the they were the talk in town because of how busted both of them were. But then when the full release came out, I, I realized uh Ken is still busted, but uh I wasn't that impressed with him compared to using Ryu of all characters now. You know, the former main staple, he's probably still, in a way, a main character. You know, still the face of Free Fighter other than Luke, but why Ryu? Well, it's pretty simple. Whatever they did to Ryu in c- c- comparison between him and 5 and 6 is like a whole different night of day with how you play as Ryu. And, and it's like he has his third strike moves, but it's like sort of like an upgrade. Like you could do so much more than you would do. If he was to play him right now in Street Fighter Five and Third Strike Ryu, it's like he he he's like holy upgrade. You could do sh- more combos with him. Uh and I made people salty with him, which is uh why he's goal three right now. Um, the second character, um, it's Lily. She, I I like the fact that she is uh, basically the next T Hawk. You know, p- similarly plays like him, but you know has different moves. And especially that certain um, combo she has in one of her combo trials, it's so easy to pull off. Or once you easily pull it off online and you win, it feels so rewarding and satisfying. Um, and the third is Zangief. Now, he does have some new moves. Uh, I wish he does have the green hand back. Like, come on, Capcom, give him his old strats back. But uh, for this one particular, uh, the reason I kept Geef of all characters, well, uh, if anyone saw earlier that uh, I made a Ken play a rage quit with Zangief. This game has been filling with nothing but rage quits. I'm gonna I'm gonna save the characters I don't like fighting for the next question because I got god damn man. Oh well, Zangief one of them? Yes he is. Ah oh, man. Alright. Alright, well I might as well do this now. So uh your worst matchup characters online that means a character that you have a pretty hard time dealing with on competitive. I'm just going to get mine out of the way now. It's going to be another three. I can't stand Zangief online. This You can't get close. So this motherfucker just grabs me out of thin blue air. It's... It's goddamn right. I have yeah. to, you have to apply strategy to Geef, otherwise, you're going to get all your health uh, 360, then it's bye bye. Uh, next up, JP, 
I think JP is probably going to be on a lot of people's lists. He could just do it all in terms of like whether if you're long screen, you get grabbed. Uh, if he's really good close range, you you will get destroyed. I, I, I don't think that I've beaten the JP for like a solid week at one point. It was that bad because they just kept like putting me in matches with like silver and I, I just kept getting like destroyed by them. And then uh, I don't want to say well, my final one is kind of hard because I would just say I don't like dealing with Manon because of the metal grab. Of course, naturally, you could jump from it, which is something you could do. That's, that's something that's common. But uh, when she gets level five, that's it, because half your health is going to go once again. Bye bye. So uh, I had that happen to me like several times and each and every single time it got really, really frustrating. So that's how I feel about the characters so far. Uh, anyone want to go next? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a stab at it real fast. Mm -hmm. Um, really, uh, in my personal experience, I suck against everybody, but um, no. But as far as like my top goes, uh, I would say that I'm like looking at it in my stats too. Uh, definitely have never won against um e Honda. Apparently, I have never won against Honda. Um. I would say Blanca is also another tough one for me, and uh, Geef as well. Uh, I was playing against a friend like up until six in the morning this morning, and um, I think we played a really long set, and it was like maybe eight or nine to like forty. So it is what it is. Hmm. Rat, rat. Why don't you go next on this one? So this might actually shock some people, but so far I have had the worst time against Ken. Yeah, <laughs> I, he's a great character. I can kind of see it. all all around her, but if the Ken is just doing that target combo where he gets you on the other side of the screen, you're going to be looking at half your health like real quick. So this is absolutely a skill issue. I will admit that flat out. But when Ken is in your face and he's doing all these kick combos and then all of a sudden he strikes you with a low and then the next second, next thing you know, you're in the middle of like a combo maelstrom. It's like I've been blown up by so many Kens. It doesn't help that he's one of the most commonly used characters online because it's Ken. His bread and butter is definitely Jinrai. I... I can't tell you how many times I was in the middle of being combo like that, and I can't tell where he's going with it, whether it's mid, low, or high. I, yeah, I was just like, okay, this is putting 300 question marks in my brain. <laughs> I can't comprehend. <laughs> it's like, fuck. So that that's how I, I feel your pain on that one. I definitely get it, even as a Kim main. The, the other character, and I feel like this is going to turn into an entire... He's going to get his own goddamn wing. JP. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yep, JP. JP is a Netherrealm character trapped in Street Fighter. He's, he throws you or he knocks you away with his pimp cane, and then all of a sudden you're eating spirits. High, low. Oh, by the way, this one grabs you. 20% of your health gone. <clears throat> it's just, it's such a different character to fight, and some characters who have no means of reliably uh, scratching him at mid-screen, let alone full screen, like like Marisa, are just going to have a time getting through that obstacle course. Also, he has teleports and just random trap vortexes, so <laughs> that doesn't help mm -hmm. matters either. But I can't think of any other characters that I just groan whenever they're on the character select screen. I guess modern Zangief you could throw in? Because, again, that character is a one-button pile driver. Hmm. Anyone else on uh, characters they have a really hard time dealing with? Uh, to be honest, uh, you know what, JP? As, uh, <laughs> uh, JP is fucking annoying. Like, I, I find, like, he is definitely one of those characters that really pisses me off because... Like Rat Rat said, he's an MK character trapped in Street Fighter. <laughs> Fucking projectiles all day. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it for me, really. I de there's a handful of characters I'd say I struggle against. Kimberly is definitely one of them. Like oh, Honda, damn. 
<laughs> yeah, someone's got to say something other than JP. Uh, Kimberly, I just... I can blow her up pretty easy with the EX headbutt, since a lot of Kims are always just doing stuff in, in the game. But, like, if I'm ever in Burnout, I have literally no idea what to do against that character. I also think it's really, really strange that um, she gets to stay in her, like, install state between rounds, whereas a lot of other people do not get that luxury. Very, very bizarre to me. DJ is also a fucking struggle for me. Like, I don't know why. I said a little stupid knee. Like, D DJ's little jumping knee, I always think that's going to cross up, and it never, never does. It's always just a front one. Never hits me crossing up. And, like, JP does suck, too, but I feel like Honda just kind of circumvents that with EX headbutt. It's like, I just skip your neutral face. I don't care. But, yeah, it's mainly just Kim and DJ that have been giving me trouble. Hmm. What about you, WAP? Uh, I did want to bring up, did you see there was a video on Twitter the other day that, um, oh, I, I know that you mentioned you play Jury and you had a problem with Zangief. There was actually a glitch where um, after he knocked Jury down with the spinning pile driver, he was able to, like, pretty much, like, um, like, Magneto, like, suck her back into him and do another spinning pile drive. Like, she just moved automatically what? from, like, one side of the stage. I'll have to I'll have to post it in here. I think Lily um, has a similar glitch that I saw. Yeah, yeah, like he was able just to pull Jury from the other side of the stage and put her right back into a spinning SPD. Yo, I need to learn this and tech. Post it I, when you I, can, I, please. I will but definitely. I, when when it's, did Iron Tager get into Street Fighter? What am I listening to? Now, God damn it. Post post it when you can because uh, I want to trigger Ren. When I find him online with Oh Zangief. fuck you. <laughs> I'll try to find it again. Um uh, but I haven't tried any kind of casual or ranked or online stuff in this game just yet. I've really just been been playing world tour and practice mode, but um overall I have always had trouble with Blanca and and Guile spanning from Street Fighter 2 on. You know, <laughs> I, I was going to say honorable mention Gal, but I changed my mind when I realized that I'm not really having that much trouble with him in this game than initially. <laughs> like at first, I think it was the first week Guile, then that turned into like JP really quickly. I, I, I Well, did you play the beta? That would have, you know, made you hate Guile. I did not, sadly. Oh, oh. Well, you would have hate Guile if you played the beta because that's all it was before JP. Wait, hold on. Maybe I did. I don't know. Is that the second open beta that they had? Because I, I remember not getting no, it into was, the first. It was their first and only open beta. Oh, okay. Then I didn't play that one. Uh, but I, I, I swear I played the game. Uh, and I remember like super enjoying it. I'm not sure if it was the online one or not. So speaking of, uh, I hope all companies do open betas from now on. Oh wait, Tekken. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, oh yeah, it's still give it time. That's a, I'm not gonna get selected. I already and, know and that. And on Steam too, by the way. But we're not here to talk about that. I'm not gonna get picked, but that's another story. So, uh, we're gonna move on to the next one. If we're all finished with this question, um, now Rad Rad, I want you to kind of answer this first so you can set it up. But what is with the ranking system online? Can you explain this, please? So, uh, what do you mean in relation to the rankings? Like, how I, I you get them and how it was coordinated? Because, like I said, I saw a video of a guy playing on a fresh account. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was trolling, but he managed to win, like, six matches, and he lost a couple. And somehow, he just jumped right up to Platinum 1. And I was like, how does that work? So I feel like there are a couple of factors in play here. Who you are fighting, how badly you body them, what is your win and loss record? I feel like all of that sort of factors in because my Chun-Li ended up in gold too. And even I was kind of scratching my head of, do I even deserve this? Uh I would like to interject on that, at least for my understanding of it, because, um, you know, what it read, when you pick the, like, you know, in the beginning, when you start, you play your first ranked match and you pick, like, your experience level, what did you pick? 
bronze. Bronze, because I was I figured I'm just starting out with the game, might as well not get thrown into the lion's den just yet. Fair enough then. Um I do know that there is like some of that does matter because some people picked like platinum or like higher and then they played their matches and then they were platinum. Um and that's why the you might see some varying uh sort of efforts and despite not winning that many, it just sort of varies. Because some people will pick higher because like an ego pick. And even if they're like ass at the game. If you like, if several people pit platinum and you play them and then you body them, it's like, all right, well, I guess you're plat. Like, um, I think that does play a part in it because I picked, I think I picked um silver. I ended up placing in silver. Um, but you placed well above it, so there you go. That is wild to me. Uh, I but I have seen variances, and I I think my option was the lowest one as a as a new challenger because I'm like I'm just sort of beginning the game, you know. Uh, but I have jumped between silver, bronze, and I uh, know it was silver, bronze, rookie, and iron for like four characters. So I, I I just thought it was like super weird. It's like one person is higher than the next, and then the other person is lower, despite me having more experience with someone like Ken I... to get bronze too. So I was like, okay, then I'll just take it. Oh, I forgot iron was actually a ranked. Until yep. uh, you posted it. Yep. So it's 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 varying degrees of uh for lack of a better term, fuckery, uh from what I see. Uh it's just you can be super high one minute or you could be like low the next minute and you just fight out of sight well you you're basically fighting outside of the bronze boonies, so to speak. That's what I was doing like all last week. If it wasn't for Kimberly, maybe I would have got my plat for Ryu. Oh, it's, it's... As a random aside, I just got back to gold five, baby. Let's go. Oh, you lucky bastard. <laughs> gold five. <laughs> uh, you. But uh, anyone else on the ranking system before we continue onward to the next one? It's uh, a lot better than it was uh, in the open beta because I chose the difficulty where mostly silver people were there. I must have won like four of my six matches, I ended up in Rookie. My Ryu was actually <laughs> oh, playing wow. in the beta. The fuck? Uh, it, 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 was, it was like I went on a win streak, and then next thing you know, I'm in silver, and then like, get in. Okay, I'm done. Uh, I don't got much to say on it, personally, but at least from what you guys say, um, yeah. I'd say the range seems fine. It's, it's definitely... It's not... I, I'm not gonna say it's the worst thing in the world because it's not, but it was definitely weird at first, and I couldn't grasp my head around it because maybe I'm just used to how uh, Tekken does it, where you're sort of like at an entry rank and then you work up from there, and that's kind of what I expected. I didn't expect to play it and be like, "Oh, I'm silver two now," and I'm like, "What?" Uh, I I literally like lost five matches and I won the rest, and I got silver two. I just thought that was weird. Uh uh, I would agree that I would have preferred to climb from the bottom and like sort of earn it. I get that like with the um, newer players, they're going to have a rough time like with the, the first few days of the weeks, whatever. Mm. But eventually the good players are going to claw their way out. The good players will be up there where they belong in Master, Diamond, whatever, Plat. And um, everyone else would slowly sort of trudge through it. But I have no real gripes with it, except that I'm not Diamond when all of my friends are like Plat, Diamond, and Master. We have one Master so far, so that's my only gripe, real gripe that yeah. I'm ass. Of 1,300 as of last week, so that is a that is a rare company. I'm fighting to get gold. I'm I'm so close. I'm like halfway there. I just got on like silver three. So all I gotta do is just survive the next few sets, and I'm pretty much done. But then I remember like my last set, they gave me like a shitload of points, and I was kind of questioning, like, what did I do? I just beat one random Jamie, and it just jumped all the way up. So I'm, I'm not sure. It, I think it's Jeff. It, it's got to be like what Rad said, where it's like they give you more points depending on the person's level. Because I swear I beat a platinum, and it just went all the way up. I was like, okay, then. Well, I'll take it. You probably get more based on like win streaks too, I imagine. But I'm not sure. Win streak does help. Oh yeah, you do. Yes, I thought so. Because. Honestly, I I'm plat 
plant two, I think, at this moment. And um Congrats. That's where the wall is in terms of like climbing regularly. Maybe it's just because I'm losing more because everyone's like kind of understanding game plans and stuff, but I shot through silver and gold like so quickly. I was plat before I even knew it, and now it's just like I probably have to gain thousands of points to climb a rank versus just barely any for previous ones. Mm. How many headbutts did you? How many headbutts did it take you to get to plat, buddy? Uh, enough to make my thumb red. That's for sure, brother. <laughs> oh yeah, that's <laughs> happened. Not right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my answer. thumb is blistered from it, like right now. No joke, but yeah. Yeah. Minus four. That's what's gonna happen, brother. <laughs> That is that is my hand on D-pad after going through so much just to get out of bronze. It's it's been absolutely insane so far. Uh, I think if I just get plat, I'll be happy. But who knows? We'll have to see. Uh, but we're gonna move on to DLC and DLC characters and characters we're excited for that might be planned or characters you want included into Street Fighter Six. So who wants to go first? Uh, I'll take it. Sure. Try to get this out of the way. Uh, okay, so... We're talking about the four DLC characters that got revealed, right? E either them or characters you want to see in general. Okay, so in terms of characters I want to see in general, uh, top four. Hakan from... Hakan Crimson Viper from Street Fighter 4 because, um, they haven't been in a game in a while and it'd be really nice to see, um... I think it kind of be perfect because I'd really like to see his oil mechanic with like, <laughs> with like um, Street Fighter 6 is like, you know, drive system. Viper is definitely a really underrated character. I'd like to see her come back. Um, I, I know this is like really expected. And I know we all like, this is a character we all really like. Um, Makoto from Third Strike. Please bring Makoto back. That's all I gotta say. And uh, finally, uh, you know what? A guest character, and uh, it's from Rival Schools, and that'd be Batsu. Like, that'd be pretty neat if they had, like, Batsu from Rival Schools as a guest, but those are four DLC characters I'd like to see. Yeah. Uh, I'll go real quick. So, Ed is one of the confirmed for uh, DLC coming, so I'm quite happy about that. I used to use Ed a lot in Street Fighter V, even though I really don't like that game that much, but he was my lead character along with ken so i'm glad he's coming back as for people i want back in general uh i was gonna say like a choice that people might not like but i i kind of want to see what happens if they put abel back i know a lot of people hate him but i, I kind of thought he was a little bit fun in street fighter 4. uh is he dead? <laughs> oh i love playing with abel. is he dead uh, abel. In no, five, no. no, he was alive. Yeah, cool. he was yeah. he was alive in five. He was just injured, you know. He just yeah. had his arm in the cast. He's fine. Yeah. Let's fix that. Kill him off. <laughs> yeah, just oh, kill no. him. Good <laughs> God. Him. Eat him. I I doubt we'll see Abel with uh, with Manal around. So uh, you you already killed Bison. Okay, I think I think the bloodshed can end there. So, no. Not if Jerry has anything to do with it. Oh God. <laughs> or JP for that matter. Another doll. Listen. Listen, JP is the new Bison. Uh, Bison's not away entirely. Uh, I'm gonna bite my fucking tongue when you said JP. Mm. JP yeah, is just an accountant. Is. I don't know about replacing Bison. <laughs> oh, all right, you know what? You know what? Uh, what was that doll that was in Street Fighter Four uh, that people that had that weird name? Capra. Yeah, the Capra. Yeah, bring her in. I, I wouldn't mind her because I'm already. Isn't either. the Capra just Cammy before she, she was not brainwashed anymore? I might be mistaken. Mm -hmm. Capra is her own her own doll. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sister. One sister. Oh, okay, okay. And Remy from Street Fighter 3, because, I mean, it, sure, it's another charge character, but I, I like Remy from Street Fighter, and uh, that, that'd be pretty neat if they use more Third Strike love, because it kind of, I mean, the roster kind of needs it a little bit. I, I think it'd be interesting if they want to use those characters to put their faces back on uh, mainstream. That'd be a cool thing to do. Uh, they did it with Alex in Street Fighter 5, so why not with another character? I think that'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Q, because Q hype. No, I, I wouldn't mind Q either. I, I I remember playing him, and the big damage that he was doing was calling my name, so that'll be my... But you have G and 5. 
Oh, no, jeez. Oh, I, I hate Man. when people say that. Shake hands with the president. Oh. I don't know. I'm surprised. Actually, like, he's going to be in six. Watch. Yeah. I think yeah. he's going to be, like, season two, probably. Yep. <laughs> Uh, but Kaneki, what what do you feel about wanting certain characters back and maybe the characters included already from the DLC? Any picks? Let's see. Other than that, you said Q. Um, I'm under the impression that I do want a certain character that I mained quite a bit ever since Street Fighter Five. Uh, I know Zeku. Was it season two? Zeku. He, he he he's the one. He's the one and only man. Listen, Zeku was three, I think. Season three. Season three. Uh, because season oh, two was all new characters, and I think Zeku was in the mixed season. Maybe I'm crazy. Oh, it might be... it's Ze Zeku was season two. Damn uh, yeah, I was going to say. Well, he, he, was... Was, he was at the tail end right there with Abigail. Mm. Yep, and uh, we don't, the more we don't talk about Abigail, the better. <laughs> um, <laughs> Scrap the arts in there. You're going to have to acknowledge yeah, it sometime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can play for him, actually. <laughs> Abigail is no more. Uh... But I want Zeku to come back. Uh, I want to see how he would play in six, especially with the new mechanics, uh, especially for a guy who is the original Strider. Uh, what they, you know, ever since he debuted. Um, I want Hugo to come back because I want to see the uh, Hugo and Alex because I want to see them f fight just one more time for the rivalry in third strike. I need that cinematic intro again to give the Andores and um. World Tour an actual move set too with that one. You could you could bring back Hugo and you can have like the Anjori skins as like his unlockable cost costumes. It would be fucking perfect. Um, I guess the only other characters I will want the only other character I want to come back is uh a proper evil Ryu and not Kage. Like I'm sorry, Kage didn't do it for me. That's why. When he came out in Street Fighter V, people modded the fuck out of him to where he at least looked like Evil Ryu and had to do the vo replace his voice. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Faylong. <laughs> oh, I want Faylong back. He's not coming back. He's he's technically mentioned in Street Fighter VI, so he I still did. Exists. I saw his movie posters. And there's a lot of reference to Cody that he is probably. I mean, I know he's the reigning mayor in Metro City right now, and um, the reigning mayor, he like can, he's a pro wrestling character. Mm -hmm, the reigning yeah. mayor, I'm like a serving mayor, or whatever. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> that was uh, good either way. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll look. Um, Hager was a was a mayor and a wrestler, so you know, he's he's president himself. of the United States. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cody, um, please. Yeah. Please. I think Cody could be coming back. Like Nash is dead. That's just that's it for him. Yeah, he's not coming he's, back. Yeah, he's um, gone. I could see Hagger becoming playable sometime. Like definitely, I think he probably should be. Moto. Yeah. It depends if never be put their, and be playable also. It depends if they want to do another versus type game or not. Because I think Hagar's reserved for those now, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Right. Like I think. We're they might they might say like oh well having Zangief and um Hagar in the same game is gonna be like torture. Marble's um, dead. Me yeah, with I mean, Hager be, well, I mean, Hager Hager be coming with the type. Um I wanna see Sodom come back also. I think Sodom and Rolento would be pretty cool. Um Oh that's another character, Rolento. Bring Rolento, him. yeah, I think he'll be pretty cool. Um Bring him, I, sorry, body LTG with his I think that would be fun. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. LTG. No, <laughs> I was gonna say I, I actually like Relento, and I, I was low key using him in Street Fighter Four, so I, I oh, me too. he comes back. Mm -hmm. He was the uh one of the final characters in that update for uh, Street Fighter Four, if I'm not mistaken. He was, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. him, Poison. Um, I forget who else. To me, he Oni. was the character. Yeah. The only was Arcade Edition. Wait, mm -hmm. uh, it was, it was, so, it was all the leftovers from Cross Tech and they could still use, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was but, like, like the, the Ultra was Poison, Relento, Elena, Hugo, and DiCapri. Oh, that's right. 
Rolento was the one, though, because out of all the characters that did, like, insane damage besides Hugo, Rolento was like, like, how are you going to fight that fucker? Especially when he does, if you do, if he combo to his super or his, his, his CA, it was done, but that's not here or there. Mm -hmm. Unless he comes back. Yeah, Rolento, I think, would be really good in this game. Like, basically, I want to see, like, a final fight pack where they would have Cody, um, Rolento, Sodom, um, Carlos and um I guess it would have to be Hagger because Guy doesn't look like he's coming back. Could be Maki. Maki, I didn't think of her. Yeah, they could do Maki. That'd be or, cool. Or Dean, who no one remembers. <laughs> Dean. <laughs> just basically fill the roster with uh most Final Fight characters. They, they could. Well, yeah, let's just cross over all the people of all the dead. Capcom fighting games. We can just get this party started, as it were. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I want this game to have a lot of characters. But someone was speaking. Oh yeah, no, I was just gonna say, as far as characters that I'd like to see return, um, Ibuki. I am excited for Ed, and I think Aki seems like cool. I guess she seems like a replacement for Fong or something of that nature for most Street Fighter Five. Uh, I was also thinking like just other characters I hadn't seen in forever, um, like Julie and Junie, the Bison dolls from Alpha Three. Um, I think that would be cool. And Julie is actually, I think, like married to T Hawk or something of that nature now. Um, there's uh, some like I haven't seen. I think it's like an arcade mode like ending screen for Lily or something of that nature. They're all together, so maybe Julie will be back in some capacity, which would be interesting. Oh. And. Uh, I like right. Karen as a character, so it'd be nice to see her again. There's there's one bonus. There's a bonus character I want to come back. Uh, bring back Dudley, please. Thank you. Well, Dudley's cool. Yeah, I could see that. We have to fight like gentlemen. <laughs> there's one character that I want yeah. to come back, but I... Yes, yeah, yeah, Street Fighter Six doesn't really have a boxer rep. No, mm, no, no. Dudley, Dudley can fix that. Yeah. No ball rock, so you know he's right there out in the open. You can pick Dudley. No. Basically, no one from Shadowloo. Yeah. He's like, no ball rock, please get rid of. Oh man. Yeah. No, I, I I'd, rather the deal, I'd rather deal with Dudley. I, I, I think the Shadowloo cares should be given the rest <laughs> in six. I mean, uh, they kind of are. Yeah, this Shadow Lou is like no more during this time period, right? Yes. Right. Oh, oh, is, at least Shadow Lou. Uh, has it? I'm surprised. No one has said Vega, right? Man, yeah, listen. Vega. I would like to see Vega, but there listen. was there was something I wanted to bring up when you said that Shadow Lou is no more. But we'll save that for another uh question. Okay. L listen, I already accepted the fact that Vega might be dead. Really? So. No. Well, like, what did I have? What did I miss? That nigga was not mentioned other than him being, you know, a fantasy of him being in a band in World Tour, mm. which was weird. That's that's pretty interesting, actually. I don't know. We'll see what route they go. Everyone's talking about the chained up guy and who he might be as they go uh, on. Right? Tour. No, well, the dude they show in one of the trailers, I forget what it was. Uh, uh, that's a world, that's tour, world that's tour thing. Sure. It is? Yep. yep. The, the box head guy? Yep. Cardboard about? contestant. It's oh, a oh, yeah, cardboard contestant. Right, right, right. Cardboard contestant. There needs, there needs to be spoilers. I need to spill something about that fucker. Uh, Spoiler cast. So uh, eventually. Count down the spoilers, I guess, for this one. You want to do it now or until we get to the storyline question? Um... Yeah, let's yeah, let's wait till then. Okay. Uh, as for myself, in terms of characters, there's one there's one Final Fight character no one has mentioned here, and he stares you right in the face in World Tour mode. I want a playable Thrasher. Oh. That guy has so much potential. Imagine you whistle, and depending on the button you press when you whistle, it summons a random Final Fight character. Oh, so you want to be like Shang Tsung from MK11? Like the it's game of course. Yeah, it's like it's less that and like more of a like a Captain Ginyu, where he just summons Ginyu Force assists. Hmm. But, but 
but the button you press determines which uh, Mad Gear thugs you send out. And they do like one, and they do like one attack, like a striker, and then they just jump off, or they get hit, which is more than likely what's going to happen. But no, I want Thrasher, and honestly, Lee Fen. Mm, Chung Lee's little apprentice. Lee Fen. What yeah. what I see when I look at her is the Chun Li equivalent to Sakura. She takes Chun Li's techniques and gives them her own like youthful spin that Sakura does. She's not quite that good at it, but she gives it her own special flavor. That can be Lee Fen. I want that. As soon as my character failed the leg thing, because I I was I just uploaded the part of World Tour I was on, I immediately went over to Lee Fan. I'm like, I'm gonna beat the hell out of you for me simply failing that because I'm the superior student. <laughs> and I, that's what I did. I'm in the prediction where, when they announce season two, most of the World Tour characters like Lee Fan will most likely be a DLC character. It's it's gonna happen. Oh yeah, there's one character I also did want to bring up, Bosch. He, he he is too well well redefined or well defined to be not to be not playable. Like they're gonna do something with him. Like that's he's the a same very thing important I said. World Tour character, and I think mm -hmm. they're gonna do something with him. Oh yeah. That was the same thing I said. I was like, why is this, this guy look super eccentric? Why is this guy not in the main roster? He would have uh, been well received probably as a new character, but uh, I guess that's going to be probably like season two stuff down the road. So it, it, it could be something that's interesting. Like they're already introducing new fighters in this game, like Kimberly. So why not do it with Bosch? And if mostly... you read like the, the prequel comic, Oh, I'm sorry. I have not. Well, no, I'm just going to say quickly, Bosch is basically a loot clone and move list. Mm -hmm. Unless they give him, like, yeah, it, I wouldn't want well, him to be a clone. Own yeah, just yeah. give him his own moveset, and I, I think I'd be fine with it. Yeah, that's also for discussion later. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt. That's fine. Oh, no, you're fine. No, no I was no. saying, like, if you read the prequel comic, um, Bosch's story suddenly makes a lot more sense. I see him like going around stealing stuff, but you know what? We we gonna we gonna get to that part at the last question, so that's gonna be the big spoiler alert. Uh, but first and foremost, we have to get to the uh, pre question before the last question. So, do you have any criticisms that could be ironed out for later updates or? any ideas for balancing uh cite your reasons uh so so i'm gonna go real quick uh nerf the fuck out of jp uh, that's the number one thing uh, is nerf his ass <laughs> to the uh, ground yeah. uh yes. if you could do something about people just spamming eight drive packs like in, in a row that would be fine uh and i don't know i don't know what else they could balance I, I think the game right now is fine for the most part but there's definitely going to be some shenanigans as soon as they introduce the new characters i i, I think as soon as that comes in is is going to be hell on earth so uh i i have a feeling that akum is going to be real strong when he comes in next year so i can't wait for that next year winter Yep. Oh, yeah, wait a long time for him. Oof. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a long Especially period of time. You gotta wait until next year for him. Uh, how do you guys hey, feel? Different... How do you guys yeah, feel about the 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 fact that he's not coming out all the way to the end of the year and they're spacing it out very the end very of next year? Yeah, Bro, he's like they're treating him as like the main event of like the <clears throat> final DLC character in the first <clears throat> season. I feel like he's gonna be the strongest, obviously, out of yeah. all the season one characters. A DLC yeah. characters. It's simple. Mm. I think that um he's technically as far as winter goes, I think it's technically early 2024. So I don't think we're waiting like a full year for him. We might be getting him as soon as like by like like February or something, maybe like January, February at the latest. I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, but I can see. I hope so. Case. No, what I meant winter twenty four well what they meant winter twenty twenty four, December, like the end of twenty twenty four. I hope not. They, did they mean that? Is that confirmed? That's what I think. That, uh, they, he's the last character, so he's not going to be released uh, early next year. It's basically a uh, release window. Really does feel like a March edition. They like get a character out there every three months type of thing. Yeah. Starting with Rashid. Because definitely this year, Rashid is first. We all know this. Yep. Yeah, yeah I mean, Rashid is summer, sh summer 2023. So, I mean, we could see Rashid... Yep. By like August, I mean like yeah. at the end of August, the latest yeah, probably Evo after Evo. Yeah, it's literally Evo or Cup, Cup, Cup. practically the week after Evo, I predict. 
I yeah. I have a prediction. I think Aki's going to come out in October, probably three months after um, Rashid. Mm-hmm. Well, it, I mean, two yeah, months, two months, two months. My bad, my fault. My bad. Yeah. I mean, I think we're slated for three characters in 2023. So I feel like if we're getting three characters in 2023, like this year, I don't see them waiting like a full like 10 or 11 months for Akuma. But that's just me. Um, I feel like that'd be bad. Um, I feel like that's just a bad move. Um, but as far as uh, balancing concerns and things of that nature goes, uh um you know ren one thing um if they're driving padding all the time it's probably a pattern you just gotta get used to reacting to it but well, i mean I, I think it's a annoying mechanic by uh, by far it's annoying <laughs> but if, if someone just keeps doing it and, and you see it coming or you do it and they do theirs first and you counter it i mean it's it's not the worst thing in the world it's just i kind of wish people would do it like eight times in a row it's like oh god it, it just kind of throws off the match a little bit uh it, but in terms of nerfing I, I i just think that the real meta is going to come from the fact of them introducing these new characters because tomorrow's character that we have now might be stronger uh later on so i'm just thinking to myself like that's when the real test is going to come when she comes out because i have a feeling if he's really strong and good they're going to start off with him and then it's just going to go into a chain of events uh but I, I have a feeling capcom knows what they're doing with this game so i'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and i think in game street fighter 6 is probably going to be entertaining for several reasons i know we're going to have probably different opinions when all these characters come out and we see uh the final version so that is what i'm looking forward to the most true uh i will say that it seems like the like it no character so far that I've seen truly feels bad, but I think that the strong characters are like really good. Looking at Ken, I don't know why he's so plus on a game where so many characters are negative um, and don't have very many plus buttons, but Ken's just sitting there kind of like, I get to enter into you for free. Um, that's what it feels like. Uh, he's really strong right now. I do think that JP is pretty strong as well. A lot of top eights and things of that nature for anyone following sort of like, on, like the uh, competitive scene. I think like Ken's usually up there, JP's usually up there. I think Cammy's been doing pretty well. Um, Jury has been doing pretty decent as well. Um, and I forget some of the others. But um it would be nice that like but I think that the game overall I don't wanna say balance because like but like characters don't feel that bad. Like but definitely feel bad in comparison to some others. If it was balanced, JP will not be in the game. <laughs> is there i have a better question is there any characters you guys think are gonna get nerfed Marisa. JP, kimberly uh, hopefully ken manon i think manon's gonna get nerfed i think manon's command grab damage could stand to be decreased just a little bit especially actually, once you're in like five five metal oh actually i know this pattern too well and knowing from watching evo um I'll say this. If Ken or JP or both are not in the top eight, expect them to get buffed. Oh Much my buffed, god. A buff, oh no less. Oh. I think Jerry is going to get uh, nerfed. Yeah. And I know this so well because of Tekken. You know what happened when Panda was like in top eight? Mm. Nerfed. Oh, yeah. Geese was in top eight as well. Nerfed. So oh, could... Leroy's in top eight, nerfed. Yeah, nerfed. Yeah, yeah I know Leroy. this. Show I mean, well. I, Lee was Lee was pretty Leroy. I'm sorry, was pretty oppressive. In my understanding, like I wasn't super deep in Tekken Seven, but he was pretty oppressive, so he needed the nerfs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. That boy was just nonstop. But yeah, uh, mm. from Tekken, I could pretty much see Capcom doing this exact same thing with six with tournaments. JP and not in top eight, he'll get buffed. As simple as that. Yeah, I I think they're probably gonna gauge from uh the competitive tournaments and make a decision from there because the complaints are going to uh be astronomical. I assume. 
and and they're gonna look at it and be like, oh, okay, so now we we're gonna do our balance patch and see who you we better keep. Better pray and... he's in top A, so he'll get nerfed for JP. I'm, oh, I'm I'm listening to all this optimism of oh they'll just gauge tournaments and that's how they'll balance the game. Yeah, how long did Cammy stay on top in Street Fighter Five and they didn't do a damn thing about her? Oh, she just slipped under the radar and then I'm not sure because I didn't play Street Fighter Five. You like, leave Cammy alone. Cammy <laughs> supremacy. I Cammy for a reason. I don't feel that like she's this broken in that game. Maybe it's just me. No, because no, Cammy is beating her in tournaments. Yeah. I mean, Cammy is good in this game, but I don't think like I mean she's I mean she's not Ken. Um, or like, I mean, so it just varies, but, uh, yeah, I don't think she's bad at all. I, Punk I, plays her, and I don't think any top-level pro is going to be wasting their time on the bad character. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I, Punk can Lily. pick anybody and win, to be honest with you. No yeah. one's going to pick Lily, that's my guess, because no one likes Lily. She's like, no, if we want to talk tier. about characters that need buffs, Lily is right there, because oh, without, yeah. without her wind, she is nothing. Yeah. Hard disagree, um, but that's just me. Um, and speaking of professional players' opinions, Punk picked up Lily, went into training mode with her for a few minutes, and then was like immediately diamond. I was like, I don't understand why people say this character is bad. I mean, I mean, it's Punk. <laughs> it's not just some schmuck online. Yeah, oh. but I'm just saying he doesn't feel like he was like everyone says Lily's bad, but they can't tell me why she's bad, and he didn't feel like the character is because bad. she needs wind to even get in and be safe. I think the skill just varies between people to people with the character. Even if a character is low tier, but someone can like pick him up and actually do good with them, then... Yeah. And she has by far some of the weakest command grabs in the game. I That I will kind of disagree. Kind of. Not entirely wrong, but you know. I mean, I mean, who gets it worse? Not her. She only does like 20% when you consider Geef, when you consider Menon, when you consider Marisa's grab. Lily's is the weakest of them all. I can't pull off a grab with Marisa, and she's a better character. I I think that oh, I can fall for her grabs. We're 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 gonna probably see a combo of fair nerfs, and we're gonna see people who are like, why the fuck fair do you touch nerfs? this person? Yeah, okay, buddy. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> well, 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 some fair nerfs. There's gonna be some people who deserve it, like <laughs> the that JP. Is or... an, that is an oxymoron. Fair nerfs. Like, yeah. Like, what the like, hell, right? And then, and then there's going to be some people that get nerfed where it's going to be like, okay, I, that totally makes sense. I That's would fun. be shocked if they never touch Lily next patch. That would be crazy. We might as well remove her out of the game. I've Okay, I've seen her grab damage, and yes, it's, it's pretty nasty, but I have also seen what Geef does, which is nastier. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're definitely going to probably take a hammer to some people, and yeah. it's just going to happen. I mean, six is pretty much Geef's game in a way. Is that good? Geef's not even that strong. It's just his grabs are strong. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. If he had green hand, then I think we would all be crying. But that should be. <laughs> As I like, went, the fuck? He has green dash now. It's much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah green, green dash. The world is his oyster. He can even three sixty out of it. Oh. Yep. Yep. He can. Uh, you know one guy that's also really good at uh, DJ. He's really nutty. <laughs> I don't know. I can. I, I've beaten DJ. It's it's just what people. Boy. Yeah, what people kind of like to do against DJs that is very ill advised is to jump in on him. Uh, Cause him the, get you with a deadly rain. Yeah, the the first thing he's going to do is he's going to do that uh, flip kick and it's going to hurt a lot. So it's best not to do it. Mm -hmm. Most DJs I know are just going to max out <laughs> to their heart's content. And if max out doesn't work, they have their other plans. Tobot kick, machine gun, uh, machine gun upper, which Shingle. does a metric ton of damage. Mm, I believe it. I, I, feel, I feel like machine gun's damage output when scaled is going to get touched a bit when it comes to balancing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 100%. Uh, but that is the end of the topic of nerfs or fair nerfs, as I labeled them. Uh, and oh, fair. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be something that, that feels good, like JP, and then others probably not. Uh, 
Uh, but we're going to talk about the storyline segment. So for people who didn't play World Tour yet, uh, as a viewer, it is time to skedaddle because there will be spoilers present. So we're going to be talking about the story mode and what we think arcade endings. If you see anything interesting and uh, go from there. So who wants to go first? Fuck the cardboard hmm. contestant. <laughs> uh, what is the deal with this guy? Because I'm like, okay, he's... So, when we were talking about Bosch, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of what we were referring to. Because yeah. while he starts out as a Luke clone, it is crystal clear that when he gets added into Street Fighter VI, you are getting evil Luke. Oh, shit. But, no. That's uh, that's this, actually quite interesting to me. That yeah. fight in World Tour is Cancer Incarnate. How would you feel about a level one that has invincible startup, armor breaks, and takes half your health because it's World Tour? And by the way, it's multi-hitting, and oh, by the by the way, it tracks. Does it and also go like this. Low. Does it also go like low overhead too, almost instantly? I definitely remember that, or something uh, to that degree. It it armor breaks, so it doesn't matter where it goes. True, yeah. <laughs> Guard oh, breaks. God. Guard breaks. Sorry, I was under the impression that it was a fair move. <laughs> this just seems like this is a uh, a really really bad encounter, and I don't know. It, they're probably also, gonna also the second to last <laughs> major fight of the game. Wait, do you so... fight Bosch in the story mode? Oh, oh, you do, you do, multiple times, in fact. Uh -huh. I know you fought him like in the very beginning, but like that was a cutscene instead. They, well, spoiler alert, they really hinted him as your rival for a reason. Yep. Mm. He, oh, I know he's he, gonna be playable. Let's just yeah. say he takes the other path that Luke was talking about. Right, because oh, I think uh -oh. his background story is um. I mean, I didn't get that far in story mode, but I think he's like, he's he's got to be from Neshal. Like that's just that's just my my thought. He he is. You essentially meet his sister. Who his sister is, is the Kalma, yeah. right? Uh, no, it's it's a little girl named Yua. She's one of the dancers at the Neshal tournament. Oh, okay. Because I thought his sister, or he's related to that girl from the uh, from the prequel. No, no, Kalima's her own character. Oh, okay. I'm but I sure. definitely thought that um that Bosch was from their show. Like yep. it just makes sense. But congratulations, all of your world door efforts meant nothing. <laughs> We're just going to get into major spoilers out of the gate in three, two, like we have well, one already. That's okay. I'm only in chapter four, but go ahead. Or chapter five, but go ahead. You fight JP and beat him, and he gives you this speech that essentially says, I'm not owned. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So God this, damn it. Yeah, this quest for strength of yours. What did it mean? What did this fight <laughs> mean to you? So None of this. Nothing. None of this means anything at all. Ha 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 ha. It's like a Dexter's I mean, lab, I mean, Mandark I mean, laugh. Wow. Like JP, but I'll take the closure of five any day over that. Uh, I said that this on San ending. Uh, I said this on Twitter, but he's literally the fucking Count Dooku of Street Fighter. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. JP's JP, cool character, great addition to Street Fighter Six. Never want to fight him again in ranked, but he's a cool character and a great addition to Street Fighter Six. <clears throat> but there, there is something I wanted to talk about. Wanted to mention also with the story, like um, timeline wise, Six is right after, or Six is after Three, not after Five. But there, oh. I've noticed there's barely any references to Third Strike. Like, I, the only thing I've seen was what Makoto was up to, and I've seen Dudley in some artworks. But um, they mentioned Shadowloo, like, like it happened the other day, like it happened yesterday. And I'm like, and from that, I've been trying to, like, um, see how much time was between five and six. And I guess my suggestion would be based on, like, um, based on that Cody's still the mayor, it had to have been like maybe four years or so. Because again, they talk about how Shadowloo happened recently. And I'm like, okay. But they also fought Gil, Urian, and the um and the Illuminati. 
in between and they don't even talk about that. So I'm like, I'm a little confused of why they talk about Shadowloo so much. Shadowloo's kind of been the main bad guy for basically everyone on the cast for longer mm -hmm. than uh, yeah. the Illuminati. Like, there aren't any third strikers, right, in this game? None? Nope. No. So Illuminati's probably more of like a Alex Ibuki generation of uh, problem versus uh, Ryu and Chun-Li. You know, that's kind of what mm -hmm. I figured, too. It's, yeah, it's, that makes sense. It's very distinct to other people and fighters. Plus, there, mm -hmm. there's Street Fighter 3 stuff on, like, billboards and, like, like the, the, the Gil poster where he recites his Street Fighter 3 ending. But I'm willing to believe that's more Easter eggs and not really things that are still happening. Like, Gil's not exactly recruiting for the Illuminati in Street Fighter 6's timeline. Mm-hmm. That makes sense, yeah. But yeah, most most mm -hmm. of my bitching in story based instances is world tour because it's not much of your story, it's Bosch's story. You're just along Pretty for the much. ride. It's yeah. Bosch's story, you're just yeah, you're just there. Like the the last time I saw him he gave me like some kind of computer chip and then him and Jerry and ran it's, off. It's such a shame because there's there's a good there's some good gang warfare going on in Street Fighter Six between the Mad Gear and like the Crows, I think they're called. Yeah, like, crows. Like Rudra, mm -hmm. that that character. He he's a pretty cool character, even though he's just Dalsim on crack as far as move lists are concerned. <laughs> so how do you crack. do that mission with the with the chip? Like I'm running around and I'm doing all these missions and fighting all these people and I'm still at zero percent. Uh what chapter what's are you the, on? What's the objective of it? Um, it says just run around, do missions while you're trying to extract the data from the chip. I think you'll I'm have a better like chance. Five or six. I think you'll have a better chance of activating it if you like, like leave and head off to another country for a bit. Like, like uh, grab more masters if you have those side quests, and then eventually it'll pop. Oh, okay, yeah, because I'm still at zero, and I'm like, I've been doing all this stuff, like. Uh, but, I don't know, anything else, Rat Rat, you want to say about the story? Um, it's, it's definitely a never-ending journey, that's for sure. Oh, the never-ending quest of finding <laughs> Bosch and he turns evil. Oh, what is true strength as the never-ending quest? What is strength? The never-ending quest to save the princess. No. The journey for strength has no ending. As a matter of fact, Luke, it does. It's called the credit screen. <laughs> Or you the million right. dollars at Capcom Cup. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the journey for strength. Cold hard cash. Man, you know Capcom's not giving out that kind of money. They they gave some plastic trophy to um what's his name um uh Menar Menar Menardi Menardi Menardi. They gave him a plastic uh, trophy after he won. You think they're gonna give two million dollars to someone? I think uh, that first it, place is five hundred thousand, yeah. but yeah. yeah no, no, first place is a cool million to win Capcom oh, Cup. It actually, it's just a straight million. A straight million. Uh, the first, nervy, the first in nervy, fighting game history. Yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I'm gonna break my Which leg, is funny because so I am going work. to Evo this year, so. <laughs> I am so upset. Oh, All of my friends are going to Evo. I want to go so bad. I thought this was gonna be my year to go, but it is what it is. Oh, just... So while we're while we're on the subject of story, mm -hmm. how do you guys feel about the career path of your favorite old school Street Fighter characters? Uh, the career path. Yeah, like mm -hmm. where where they are now in six. Oh, oh, well. I feel sorry for Ken. Yeah, Ken, Ken, man, they. I think the way they did Ken in the six was like. It's kind of funny because there were like so many leaks that you know Ken, you know his wife left him, but no, Ken was actually like cold framed. Cold. Yeah. yeah, Ken was actually framed by like he was actually framed by like JP, and it's kind of crazy how his life yeah. kind of went down the drain. Because normally from like a story point of view for Ken, I don't think his story was like as important in the previous games. You know, he was always like Ryu's rival. You know, you know so, what I think because of that. Mm -hmm. I think I think JP is Ken's bison with that story. Uh, that, that that's a crazy theory, but 
What, what bison is to Ryu, JP might be Ken's bison. I was wondering why. Yeah, I, you know, uh, with, with how he got framed. I think the, I think the comparison is. is bison to like JP is to Ken what bison is to Chun Li. Like you ruined my life, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was wondering why he was oh, yeah. crushing the can. It's a guy also. Because he did take he did take away like half of like a lot from Guile also. Oh, yeah, he killed Nash. Yeah, yeah. I was I was yeah. wondering why he was uh crushing the can in his ending, uh, and then JP was like standing right behind him or some sort of vision or whatever. I don't know what it was, but Ken was like really fucking pissed. Uh, mm -hmm. so it all it all ties together in the end. So that if you read the prequel comics, a lot of it makes sense too. Yeah, yeah it, that's they're setting that up, which is interesting to see how you know that has all culminated into one thing with Ken having someone he hates to. Yeah, because uh, if you play like Guile's like arcade mode, like his story, um, he actually tries to help Ken with this problem, and Ken kind of like tells him, I can't, I gotta do this alone, and so Guile basically decides to look into the nice shell business and JP. So I have a feeling they're going to save that up for like a seventh game. If JP that well, I'm pretty sure JP is going to come back in the next one. Mm -hmm. I feel I disagree. I feel like JP is a one and done character. Oh, really? Like, like Q and three and G and five. Mm. That will be funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be funny if JP was working with done. G? Yeah, I was gonna say everyone's saying G is a one and done. Oh, I'm still no, gonna say no, he might come back. No, no, he's gotta come back. Well, if that's the case, and well, it's reverse, and I guess Ken will go back to his old, good old ways. <laughs> like six never had. He has to at this point. Nigga got framed. <laughs> okay, like this guy is not here to ruin my life anymore. So that is good, actually. Um, all the other characters I've seen. Well, I've, I've seen some. You know, Rio seems like he's. Just still vibing and enjoying his life, and well, you never you had a know. job, so <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, I didn't say yeah, job. I say he's like vibing. He's still Listen, homeless for you. He has a phone now. And then his story ended when he beat Bison, even though you know Bison didn't mm -hmm. affect him much. He's still the wandering warrior. Just now, it's he's a little bit more at peace. So uh, that is true. Mm -hmm. That his storyline just seems to be kaput for now. But hey, he has a phone to master, so that's his new enemy. That's Technology a trial in and of itself. <laughs> Technology. What the fuck am I doing? Ryu versus Technology is a 10 0 match. <laughs> I yeah, think doing well first. I'm just, I'm just saying, I just think of the Udon comic where he and Sakura are sharing messages and Ryu types every single key one after another. Oh, oh you know, boring God. Ryu. <laughs> the answer lies in the heart of the internet. He does not. <laughs> it really <laughs> does. Oh God! So Google is his best friend. I got it. That's funny as shit. <laughs> oh no! Whatever you do, Ryu, don't look at uh Rule Thirty Four. Oh please no! Ooh. Please no! 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 Uh, oh God! Okay, so uh, the new characters. How do we feel about Marisa being totally DTF? <laughs> Mm, oh, that's yeah. hilarious. I love that's it. That's great. That is absolutely great. She's a love Mommy? strong fighter. Dude, she's Mommy? she's she's a total sweetheart too. Like she's like yeah. she's actually really nice. Like the world series. If you actually like like she gives you like really good advice and she always like compliments your stuff uh, and wants you to get better. Uh, so uh, like Context: Marisa is going around trying to fuck, or what's it's 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 oh, it's pretty it's in much. Zen Geef's arcade mode where she's she's looking for a hubby. Oh, you pick a you pick a partner for her too, and um, world tour mode as well. It's one of her social links. <laughs> yes. Links. And she yes. says she's looking for a husband. Yeah. Um, That's she, like she, she, she wants ends up the taking both of them. Yeah. I was gonna say I, to wrap around a little bit back to the horny discussion from earlier. I would like to say Marisa does have a social link where she says, "You know, pan creation is supposed to be practiced in the nude, but it's frowned upon." And she would happily do it if she could, but that's why she wears clothes. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so canonically, a nude mod for Marisa would make sense. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. You know what? I'll be right back. 
If I think it's <laughs> wow. I think it's new eighties, that's actually pretty accurate because like Pink Trish is like fight nude. <laughs> yeah, it's like an right, old that's old what ass Roman sport. Do. <laughs> you just ripped off your clothes and started beating the shit out of each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna say anything about that. I'm gonna just pretty much keep my thoughts right to myself on this topic. Uh, I am I am abs I am absolutely flabbergasted by this. <laughs> the, the fact that it's in oh, the wait, game in the right. first place. Capcom doesn't want to do with nude mods no more. So oh, that's yeah, like stop people. <laughs> yeah, that yeah but that's directly canon though. No if, if, if there's like a, like a naked uh, Marisa, that's kind of canon. Yeah, yeah. Take them clothes off or get that ass band. I. I I'm just shocked by this. I was like, I did not even know this existed oh, until now. So. Nude for her. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Oh, no, wait. oh no, wait. There is updates. Okay, no, I found it. Never mind. Oh boy. It updates to this fucking mod. <laughs> put so much time in. Two dollars a month to. You just, you just really have to look harder, but it's it exists. Two dollars a month to <laughs> jack oh, yeah. off uh, and be degenerate. Because you know, three dollars a month. Oh yeah, to add on to Marisa. Ryan, you're the uh, one to talk. I know you're doing right. I know a lot of people <laughs> should. Listen, you download those nudes and mods of Jill and RE3. Hell no. Bro, where is this <laughs> going? In my head. <laughs> mm. I got here, I was trying to say something. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of people have been shipping Marisa and Manon together on Twitter. I'm <laughs> not really? surprised. Manon and Marisa. Yeah, Marisa and Manon. Oh, people I mean, have been shipping them since before the game came out. I oh, see yeah. more of Manon and Jerry. In in Marie up. in Marisa's uh, arcade story, the the two are just kind of goofballing it up. <laughs> yeah, and I'm all for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm I see more of Manon and Jerry being the thing, but hey. Let shippers be shippers. This is just, it really goes with anybody, to be honest with you. Yeah, this is man. just feet problems that people be having, and it is weird. I mean, man, it has feet too. It, it's a perfect. Uh, That's what I told Drew. I was like, "Hold on, you sure?" It looks like I don't mean Jerry because she has feet. Well, I was like, "You're sure?" Because people look at Manon like that too. Look, bro. Look, Manon. Mm -hmm. Look, she be the kind of chick that showers like five times a day. <laughs> well, Speaking she, of Jerry, the Foot Clan has ruined everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell, her, tell us about that. She actually has, you know, she actually has a story. You know, before she worked with Bison. So, Jerry might uh, know a bit more about the goings-on than, like, we think she does. It's it's like in Chun-Li's arcade mode, where she says something along the lines of, oh, if you think the big bad is dead after after the events of Street Fighter V, oh, 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 if you knew what I knew, that type of thing. And so, uh, no, Joe, you can't kill him. Bison resurrection in the future? Yeah, I, mean, and, I guess it could be because that's still like Jerry's like worst nightmare come to life is Bison. So, yeah. mm -hmm. like she still thinks about him too because she couldn't exact her revenge on him. Well, that gives Ryu something to uh, go against watch when that be, finally happens. Watch it be Bison, but half his move is from Gil. <sighs> it's like, oh, I I I, taught, I was taught some move from a but guy with stripes of red and blue. I don't I don't need Bison to be resurrecting that that's gonna be like nightmare fuel for me. Uh I don't I don't need that in my life, so I'm gonna skip no. right past that. What Bison will fight though is from EX where he fucking does or he he can't even let you you can't even let you breathe. Gonna He's be... gonna spam psycho crushers and psycho ball nonstop. That's what I think his resurrection would be. Mm. Before we wrap up, Rad, I, I have a question for you. I guess I can spread it around the panel, but I just want to get your opinion first. Uh, do you think there's going to be further story DLC or world tour updates for Street Fighter VI? I think beyond a shadow of a doubt there will be. They've already said that any of the DLC characters added to the game may very well be included in World Tour, i.e. we're going to make them masters and you'll be able to learn moves off them. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if they add like a side quest or two to maybe unlock the area they're in or more yet, better yet, make them a part of the story. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, I wanted to ask a question about that, about story and DLC characters. So when the hell did Ed become German? I have no idea. 
You, yeah. you got me on that one. I'm not the ed expert around here, yeah. Red. I, 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 Red. I like Ed, but I don't know his lore. I just play with him because he's cool. Isn't li- I mean, isn't Ed just like a clone, a test tube baby, essentially? Am yeah. I wrong? I think so. And my, my only suggestion, I guess he's not, he's quote unquote not German, but he lives in Germany. Like maybe him, or maybe he moved to Germany with, um, with Falk or something. But like, when I heard him, whenever I heard him talking in the, in the fifth game, he sounded like he was from New York. Like, you know, he had the New York accent. He's like, come on. I'm standing here. Like, yeah. 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 All I know about Ed is like um, Balrog is like his adopted father and served time out of the box. That's about it. Yeah, he might have adopted mm. that accent from him, uh, considering the thing. But I'm I'm not sure if they're gonna make any origin changes or or whatnot. So I mean, anything could be possible, mm-hmm. I guess. I have the real question for DLC characters here, though. Yeah. Mm. When, they, when they add Akuma to World Tour, do you think he'll have a phone to text you with? Yes or no? Oh my oh, fucking god! Oh I'm gonna be god. fine. No, I don't think so. I think he's gonna find. He, he's gonna. Oh. Um, he's gonna use. He's gonna raging tablet. demon his way over to you oh. instead of texting. Oh, he's, gonna, he's gonna have a tablet. Street <laughs> Fighter Six now with the Akuma Everywhere system. Oh, bro. Bro. <laughs> really bro. Bro. Akuma DoorDash. Bro, we'll, we'll take the bus to get to you. Be like, oh, you need to train. Oh, um, you need some train? No problem. I just need to take the bus. I'll be there in five minutes. Why this big <laughs> traffic cone shaking? You pick it up. There's Akuma ready to fight you. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> when your Akuma order just in there on the bus. When, oh my when god! When he's arriving at your order, you you'll feel the ground shake. That's where you know your your food is there. <laughs> with like Akuma's here with your delivery. With with, with the DoorDash mock and all that. <laughs> Why do I want like a hat on? I don't want to see like a little cap on him. That'd be funny yeah. shit. Hmm. Hold on, Ren. But before I want to add the additional question, I would like to add something else about the World Tour. Um, another spoiler is in about three, two, one. Um, so any everyone that played Tree Fighter, right? Uh, you all know the infamous uh, Shang Long. That's right, Shang Long from Tree Fighter Two. When they when they like, I want to say when they i want to say was it a typo or it was a mistranslation i think it was a mistranslation that Mm -hmm. turned into an april fool's joke wasn't it yeah yeah so or like a like a urban legend was an urban legend was an april fool's joke but later on after you beat the game or or beat the main story for world tour the same spot you met the cardboard uh (laughs) cardboard rival bosh (laughs) you meet the one and only Shang Long. He is real after all these years. Okay, Capcom, you didn't need to go in with your Easter eggs that hard. Now you're just talking about Easter eggs that never technically existed. I always and ma- now he existed. It, I, I don't know if it's just me, but uh, I thought everyone for the longest time thought that Shang Long was Goken actually the whole time. Yeah, that was a popular theory for like yep. years and years, and then I got yep. spread. Well, like the English well, name. Mm. Yeah. Does anyone remember Street Fighter the movie, the game, the movie, the game? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. He, he was Wait, supposed to be. He was supposed to be a character in that game, with and- like with like a dragon arm, and it was a full makeup arm in a dragon shape. But they couldn't quite get scanning down in time, so you almost had a playable Shen Long. Interesting, actually. And now you can fight him in World Tour, and he is just as the legend said. We're talking level 90. Oh my <laughs> god, I'm not looking yeah. forward to that. Christ, oh boy. I'm not looking I, forward to that. I wonder what you get for beating him. Probably nothing but bragging, bragging rights. rights. Bragging rights, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you must defeat Shing Long to stand a chance against me. Wait, is that, he part of that, like, mighty fighty quest? A what? Um, um, it's, okay, so you- Or is you, he just, you, like, there? You, cl- you climb the top of the Siren Tower, and he's basically there. It's the spot where you meet Cardboard Contestant, and, like- Oh, I thought he was, like, like the climax 14. of the mighty, the mighty fighty, okay. I got no. You. <laughs> Dang. He, like, like, he, he might as well be. We're talking level 90. I would be- No. 
I I I will be happy if he was later on playable in the later season. Like, oh, that would be crazy! Like like, uh, oh. make him finally playable so the Easter egg rumor, uh, Easter egg story man, will fully be over. That man would be mm. Ultimate Instinct Shoto. Yes, <laughs> like, he'll be like, more of Ultimate Shoto than Akuma. Like like for, like from the concept art for the movie, the game, he would not block at oh. all. Because he oh. would dodge every attack you throw at him. That rules. <laughs> so he doesn't believe in blocking. I like that. I didn't pay sixty dollars to block Shenglong. Yep. <laughs> yeah, make the AI like that for the the rest of the characters, like Vega, Kappa. Man, bring <laughs> you back. You guys have done so much world tour. I'm like level like five or six in that. I hadn't yeah. touched it. I've been out here going to locals and like playing. Like I've been out here trying to get good you've at the been, game. <laughs> you've been busy play You've been busy seeking strength in the real world. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I'm here playing a dating sim. So <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, already, I already met. I already maxed out Chun Li, Cammy, Jury. All the waifus. I got the costumes. I just need to max out Maurice. So yeah, there's good. so much. There's so much context I don't have for these things. I'm like, I thought people just played fighting games to go and like try and beat some ass. But I'm curious about Street Fighter Lore. Maybe I should dive into it here in the future. Good luck. <laughs> That's oh, a yeah, lot I've been of doing Street Fighter lore stuff for years. <laughs> I will say, I will say, it always before, changes though. Before five and six hit, it was a mess of we we need to pull out Japanese guides just to have story, just to make it make sense. Mm hmm. Now a you got. Make sense now. Now you wait, got. Did you guys get to the part where Jury pranked Ryu? No. For, th for those that don't know, uh if y'all thought Street Fighter Two was the actual Street Fighter Two in terms of story. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, there's. It a... was the Alpha series that was the actual sequel to Street Fighter One. A lot of people mm -hmm. forget about story. Alpha. Oh yeah. Speaking of, you can play Street Fighter One in this. Well, we need we need to at least I know unrelated to storyline and all that, but I just want to play up the Battle Hub and how much of a great success it is. Oh yeah, Ren, we didn't even talk about oh, that. Oh yeah, Battle Hub. I didn't even go yeah. Battle Hub yet. Battle Hub is fucking great. I, I like it. Dude, Avatar battles are really fun. Like they're just Avatar the battles, oh man, that, that is game changing for when you want to fuck around with, with other avatars and you want to battle them. What, a, what an interesting experience. Did anyone do the extreme battles? Because I, I have not yet. I've, I've done them like once or twice. They're they're fun for a giggle, but it's not exactly the the test your luck of Mortal Kombat. Mm. There, there's one extreme battle where they have uh, one of the enemies from Mega Man. Yes. Oh, that's cool. Yes, yes. That 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 rule was was actually fun. Uh, what is mm. you have to hit it, and then when, if you hit it, the thing will explode yeah. at the opponent. Yeah, yeah. If you and hit it, fun. it works for you. <laughs> Yep, that mode was fun, and and of course there's the game center, which has Freaking like out. final fight. I saw that Street Fighter One was a fucking hate. Yeah, we're gonna go go play it. No fight. No finish the coward. No. Finish no. Finish the the coward. <laughs> I need yes, two you're, you're trillion dollars. This, this is finish. the easiest Street Fighter One has ever been. Oh god, I hate that game. It makes yeah, it uh, it's work. Yeah, oh. Infinite continues actually in the arcades. If you guys are wondering, they probably replaced it now. But yeah, man, they what... they they rotate games. I was fortunate enough to play my baby Hyper Fighting. It's it's just like I remember it. Oh, and a uh, fun tip. Uh, I don't know if you could still do it now, but if you linked your Capcom ID, and this is for PlayStation Steam users only. Sorry, Xbox. Uh, you could unlimitedly play. Super Street Fighter 2 was a Super Turbo. Correction. Uh, Ooh. Correction. And, and, and the, it actually the, no, works no. for every console because I'm on Xbox. Oh, for even for Xbox? Xbox? Super Turbo. That is correct. So, I was okay, under the impression weird, that it was console only and Steam people could not get Super Turbo. No. When they first. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, but when they first posted, they said specifically PlayStation and Steam, but I guess I'm glad that they finally last minute changed their mind. It's like, oh, Xbox so, people get it too. I know, I know this is sacrilege, 
to say, but one change I would like to see added to Street Fighter Six is all these game center games need two player modes, especially Final Fight. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't nice. play Final Fight one player. Yes, because it's you need you need two people and 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 people can mm. dick around. Excuse me, people can dick around with the classic modes. Yes, they, and mm -hmm. I, yeah. I was say, do they not like dot these games around like the the world tour map or? There, there are a few uh, yeah, arcade machines few around the world had. tour. I like, thought I know a... Sunstone is in Nishal, and I played that. Yeah. I, yep. I saw a Final Fight um, cabinet near the dumpster in the regular area. The mm -hmm. dumpster and in the uh, when you go to your first tournament in Metro City. Yeah, they have them at the Hagger Stadium. Yeah, like the li the little mm -hmm. the little uh, Chinatown alleyway. I'm pretty sure had a Final Fight machine. Mm hmm. Because that's where because a little bit of Mad Gear hang out there, and of course, of course, they want the game that they sponsored. Mm hmm. But, I, but, but, you know, the mm. argument is, well, you, you, you're not here to play those classic games with your friends online. No, you came here to play Street Fighter Six online. Yeah. I get it. That's fine. But uh, can we have the option anyways? So at least for two players? And, and mm -hmm. you, if, you, if you go into any type of matchmaking and you activate a Game Center game, you're knocked out of matchmaking. So, so what if I want to fuck around on another arcade cabinet before I play a round of Street Fighter Six? Is that so wrong? Apparently, no. Well, it's definitely adjustments to be made as uh, people go around and start messing with the cabinets. I, I don't see anything wrong with uh, updates in that department. Uh, but unless we have any more questions on anything else, I think that's it for today, right? There's one more thing. One more. Mm -hmm. We gotta talk about the potential this game already has. With Street Fighter 6 PC version, the modding community was already on the scene. The moment this game came out, you already seen mods from the closed beta that was, <laughs> uh, yeah, got mm. ported to the release of Street Fighter 6. But that's not all. There was more mods to the Street Fighter 6 uh, ever since the game launch. Uh, Ren, how do you feel about Virgil being a Street Fighter 6? That is hype. Uh, he yeah. is he he is a skin mod for JP. Fuck! I saw that. That was awesome. Oh, oh, makes the oh, most yeah, sense, but one. even so, I mirror Ren's reaction. <laughs> just like, Did you see Mewtwo JP? I I yeah. have. <laughs> I've, I posted that. that is, and that's actually that awesome. a whole new level of nightmare with that. But uh, but there's more. Um, you feel like you don't want to play Jump Force, or you want to play a Jump Force too? This game got you covered. It got Goku, Vegeta, Luffy. Luffy in his Gear 4 recently. But, you know, as E-Honda is Gear 4 Luffy. Oh my god, that makes too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing Yeah, I just it. saw Chun-Li as Ada. That was pretty cool. I, I saw my favorite Chun-Li costume, which is, of course, her, her Power Rangers gear. Her oh, lightning. I saw that, too. Oh, yeah, the Power Rangers mod has made a return. Uh, the Lightning Hawk Ranger? No, that's not it. Hmm. Well, but that one. Me. That one. Like, like, whatever her Power Ranger self was, that's the best outfit. Mm -hmm. And I saw yeah. it represented through mods. Yeah, I think there was another one. There was the Ryu Ranger, obviously. Um, recently, th there's already a Berserk mod for Ryu. Well, not Guts himself, but Guts in his Berserker armor. Is that oh, that's skin so mod cool. for you? Oh, that's neat. I would and... assume I would assume a lot of this would be like Easy Street, considering it's RE Engine and most of the assets are there. You see, that's what I thought, but then I realized anime characters being modded in in, in the RE Engine that I have never heard of for modding scenes. Mm -hmm. the, it's just the modding community got a lot better. Street Fighter Five was practice. That's a lot of practice, let me tell you. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, they also returned. Uh, there's already a mod where Jerry has no eye patch. Uh, Chun Li's her alpha outfit, but there's a lot of variety for that. You could have her uh, top, well, not topless, but you know, her without mm -hmm. the usual top. You just have the without blue the vest, suit. yeah. Her topless yeah. too. 
There's a lot of topless <laughs> characters, important. let me tell you. Uh, for yeah, the yeah. Uh, hobos and vagrants out there, sure. I see. Um, I see Blanca getting air grabbed out of a ball. That's not normal, right? Uh, did, you, did you see the link I posted in the recording discussion? And I see JP doing it as well. I'm like, I'll, I'll post it in the recording uh, chat or I'll post it in the podcast chat so people can see. But yeah, mm -hmm. this, any any more uh, talk on the mods, Kaneki? Um, there's a lot, but I don't want to take up too much time. The only thing, other only other thing I could say is, uh, ever since Street Fighter Six came out, the modding has been massively improvement. Like, how, already when the game came out, it had it had more mods than Street Fighter Five did in a single day. Oh yeah, and and it's not even over yet. We're just literally getting started. Uh, mm. There's even Star Wars mods, like, like the fucking um, I forgot his name, Sid. Like the Sith Lord, I think he he's uh, a mod uh, SJP. Oh yeah. Yep, I posted it. So, uh, but uh, fun podcast overall. Talked about uh, some of the stuff we really liked and and some of the stuff we get frustrated with online. I think it was a good discussion so far so we're gonna close out on this buster wolf podcast and i think the next one after this is a mortal Kombat. mortal Kombat one so uh that'll be next month that'll be exciting because looks really good but until then we're gonna do our outros so you can find me on twitter at rent operative underscore you can find me on youtube Renegade Operative, where I will be uh, posting more footage. I, I recently did World Tour, so you can see that part up live on the channel. And that'll be it for me. So, Kaneki, what is your outro, sir? Uh, you can only find me on YouTube and Twitter under Google War Order. I would. Uh, I, I still have a Twitch account, but uh, I should have fucking deleted it because the recent events to Twitch, uh, yeah, they could go fuck themselves, and I will never stream on there. For the rest of my life. Oh, there you go. Uh, there, there's this new streaming competitor as well, so maybe you can take that as an idea. Uh, let's see. I'll just be on YouTube only for streaming. That's fair enough. But Nikki, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Neurocatatonic. You can find me on YouTube, Neurocatatonic Gaming, and you can also find me on Twitch at Neurocatatonic. Um, and if you like doom metal, melodic death metal, black metal, all that cool stuff, death metal too, um, you can find me Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. on Metal Devastation Radio, Siren Scream, where I play some of the coolest death, doom, melodic death, and black metal. Rat Rat, where can we find you, buddy? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at the Rad Rad, and you can find my YouTube channel, Rad Rad's Rad Games, where we were just talking about Mortal Kombat. So alongside me playing through every Street Fighter VI arcade mode, I'm playing through a bunch of classic Mortal Kombat games. Arcade version, 16-bit, 8-bit. I'm trying to play it all in preparation for Mortal Kombat 1, so check out my YouTube channel if you want to see the rage and the recollection. Don't forget to play the Tiger games. If I could, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Aurora, where can we find you, buddy? All right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at RT and Aurora, YouTube at Project Aurora Plays, um, as well as on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Project Aurora, where I usually stream Thursday, Friday, or depends if I go to a local as far as Fridays go. But I do stream primarily Street Fighter Six, but I will stream Thursday, Saturday, and Sundays. So if you ever want to check that out, you can find me there. Hades, where can we find you, buddy? Yeah, my Twitter, Hades underscore Manticore. My Twitch is Hades Manticore. I promise I'll stream there at some point. And my YouTube, City State Manticore. Where I'm still on that evergreen quest to find the worst fighting game of all time. I've added a few new contenders recently, but it's still the same as it was last time, unfortunately. And Andre, what is your social media? Where can we find you? You can find me at Twitter at Andre B. Venom and also YouTube at Andre B. Venom. Um, yeah, I'm get, um, getting to the hang of streaming, having a lot of fun. Definitely going to stream more on YouTube when I get the chance. 
All right, and this is the IES signing off. Uh, nice fighting game discussions all around for Buster Wolf, and look forward to future Buster Wolfs in the future. Once again, we're going to be talking about MK1 and Virtual Fighter, and if anything comes up, whenever Tekken comes out, uh, it will definitely come across the table. Until then, we are signing out, and we will see you people out there in YouTube land and Spotify land later. See you. Happy yeah. Father's Day! Goodbye. Happy Father's Day, Dio! Happy Father's Day! Let's also, go! I've been nodded out. Ken. Happy Father's Day.